Well, Molly, I was wondering when you'd get around to that. What? You mean you saw through my disguise? A criminal always makes one mistake, Molly. Those straws you gave Robin to breathe through, I spotted the defect in the mask instantly. That was the one hole in your plan. Well, there are gonna be some holes in you, Batman. Foolish girl. You were so bent on your murderous scheme, you failed to notice. In the Batmobile, I burnt off your revolver's firing pin with a hidden bat laser beam. Molly? Molly, stop! You're climbing into the Batmobile's nuclear power source! Call it, Alfred. There was the cleanup. Let's go. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Good evening, folks. We're here. Hey, What's up, everybody? We made it. We finally made it. How's everyone going? How's everyone doing? Are they going? <laughs> <laughs> I can speak. What's up? I'm Lorenzo. This is my comic son, Marcus, aka Circumstances, the king of the memes on Instagram. And we're here to do our weekly thing every week where we talk about comics and other stuff. And we have some wonderful people both in the chat and coming up as guests too later on. So stick around for that. And the thing is, uh, this show, like every other show for ours, is brought to you by the Alternative City Shop. I not only love reading indie comics, but I've self-published several indie comics of my own. You can find them on my Alternative City Shop, which has a link below this video. There, you'll find, along with my comics, t-shirts, stickers, and mystery boxes, you'll find pens and magnets that I call CBOs, or comic book originals, which are buttons, magnets, and pocket mirrors that I make from superhero comic books. These are one-of-a-kind items made from images cut directly from comic books, not photocopies, so each one is unique. That's what's up. Yeah, and we got a lot of the homies in the chat already, starting with my man, Phil's Treehouse. Check out Phil. He's been filling in for TM Nerdy over on Geek Out with Roscoe Monday nights for Between the Lines, and they've been doing a great job. And uh, I have aspirations of getting Lorenzo on that show one of these days. It's every show has a theme, and the artist gets interviewed, so Lorenzo would answer questions while everybody uh, creates art based off a, a, a theme of the night. Mm. And then at the end of the show, everybody shows off their art, and it's really fun. And uh, Definitely check it out on Monday nights. But what's up, Phil? Good to see you, my man. We've got 80s guy, one of our regulars in here. Well, Phil's a regular too, but what up, 80s guy? Good to see you, my man. Of course, the lovely Miss Janet is here as always. We got Peter Regatta in the hizzy sledhead, my guy. Thanks for hanging out last night. And we had an appearance from Lorenzo last night, which was super cool. So what's up? It Thank happened. you guys for hanging out for FOC and chill last night. And what up to Hooked on Juno, who also came through to say what's up. Thanks for coming through. Uh, we we know that you have hectic lives and comic <laughs> book YouTube is pretty Absolutely. low on the list of priorities. So we appreciate you coming through, taking any kind of time for us. So thank you to Hooked on Juno. Thanks for coming through, my man. Who else <laughs> we got in here? 
We got couching and slouching with C Bizzle. C Biz. Good to see you. Good to see you, my man. And we've <laughs> laser <got>, beam. <laughs> yes, I love that. <laughs> we've got uh we've got the homie Larry Love, also known as also known as Larry Love and Larry. The Quiet Storm. Oh, I love the Quiet Storm, <laughs> dude. That was good stuff. Who else we got in here? Is that everybody? <clears throat> I think I saw a Brian LCS sighting. Oh, there he is. Hey. Yeah, was, the then. man, the myth, the legend behind the CBC Awards. Get ready for that. Gearing back up in June. Looking forward to that. We got End of Zed sneaking in here at the end. What's up, oh, Zed? Oh. Good to see you. Happy new comic book day to all the homies. I really do love this week to week thing. It's Christmas every week. Um, and it still is exciting. You know, I know for a lot of people it wears off the excitement, you know, after you've been doing it for a while. But for me, I get excited about it every week, man. It's a nice little thing to look forward to every week. We got D'Artanian Big sneaking in here. What's up, D'Artanian? We also got South Paul Brad, my brother. What's up, Brad? Hope to see you in Charlotte, North Carolina. I just booked my hotel, so my flight is booked. My hotel is booked, uh, but uh -huh. I have not bought a ticket to the con yet because I'm holding out. I don't think I'm going to get one, but I'm holding out hope that I can get a press pass to Heroes Con. So that would be, Ooh, man, highly, be they awesome. Seemed, they seem to have more stringent requirements than Planet Comic Con, so I don't know that I'll get one, uh, but that would be dope. We got Willie Survive uh, in the house. What's up, Willie? Yes, what's up, my friend? Don't do it, man. Not with that money. So last night on FOC and Chill, uh, it's really FOC versus Chill. Um, if nobody jumps on to talk to me, then I go to the FOC. And usually every week, someone jumps on to stop me from doing FOC. The <laughs> last two weeks, the last two weeks, it's been Bleecker Street Comics. Uh, he had to be. I got to actually get deep into FOC this uh, last night, but then he came in and shut it off. And uh, the topic that I was going for that no one was interested in talking about uh, was the recent allegations with Ed Pisker. Uh, did you have, do you, I don't know if the chat is aware of it or not, but did you have any thoughts on that, Lorenzo? I do have some thoughts on that. Uh, even though it, as we speak, you know, there is really, it's a developing story and it's not, uh, there's, as far as I know, there have been no charges filed. There, there have been allegations I, I hear about uh, things. I don't that know he's that done. there's there's not anything chargeable for what we know. That's what I'm saying. I mean, I you know, I mean, okay, well, from what I can tell, uh, there there's first of all, there's like about two channels out there. They're just making a living off of trashing Ed Piscor. You know, you know yeah. sometimes people trash, you know, Comic Tom, you know, like, you know, you know, it's like yeah. they just choose like this. I'm going to be that guy. I'm, I'm going to be the yeah. guy who just like, you know, shits on somebody else for my benefit. And uh, it's, you know, it's your life. It's your karma for doing that kind of thing. You know, you're welcome to do it. People watch it. Great. Good for you. Uh, so other than those two channels, I don't see a lot of information out there about this, uh, this subject. And it seems like he's kind of gone quiet and and uh, and underground, and he's just he's not addressing it uh, for whatever reasons. Uh, you know, he has his reasons, I suppose. Uh, but here's what I've heard: I just, it just, it's just, I hate, I feel bad talking about it because it's not nothing concrete. You know, because I hate I mean, speculation. Some you know, the some DM, of it is the DMs the, the, are pretty concrete, the, and the DMs to paint a clear picture. And there's yeah. nothing illegal, but there's definitely some major predator, creepy, uh, you know, not yeah. cool stuff going on. Uh, you can't yeah. deny that. Yeah, I mean, these DMs are real, and it appears that they are because he hasn't denied them, you know, because uh, it's hard to trust, you know, Twitter or X now, it was being called, there's... because it's been turned into such this, this, this cesspool of, of shit. But if this is these DMs are to be believed and they are real, then it, it's got a pretty picture that paints of of, of, of Ed Piscor. Uh, and there's a lot of people who just first of all did not like him, not just his art and not just Red Room, you know, which I think Red Room and his art to me stand alone. That doesn't change my opinion of those things at all. You know, the man can draw his ass off 
And Red Room is a story about a dark subject that nobody wants to talk about that he had the courage to actually jump into. These are real things. I mean, you don't want to think about them being real, but sadly, you know, these these things exist in this this world. And he just dove into it and did a, a deep dive and did not pull any punches. And if that's not your cup of tea to, to watch, great. I, God, God love you. I, I understand it. It's, it's, it's not... I got a stronger stomach than some people have, I guess. So I, I can deal with, you know, gruesome stuff like that. But, you know, I think Ed himself has not endeared himself to a lot of people in the community. He's come off as rude and dismissive a lot of times in in the, the comments and with his dealings with people, I guess. And uh, and when something like this happens, you know, you know, if you if you've not uh you know <laughs> a, a favorite person, they can't wait to oh they, they they can't wait to throw dirt on your grave, man. I mean, you know, fuck this motherfucker. I, I knew I knew he was a piece of shit, you know. Now I'm ready to just cancel him and, and get rid of him. Uh, you know, I um you know, so long story short, before I you know get, get too long into this, it's just that he may not be a uh, he may be kind of a, a smarmy guy as it, if, if this comes out. If this if he's a sleazy. He doesn't know how to deal with women, okay. And, and a lot of people are like a lot of men, I should say, not people. A lot of men are like this, uh, and a lot of men, unfortunately, in our hobby, you know, because they don't have a lot of interaction with women. And then you get some kind of notoriety, and you get some power, and now, okay, now I can treat these creatures I don't really like, and just uh, think that I'm you know, not being fairly served by them in a certain way and demand things from them. If, if these accusations are true about him, you know, telling this woman like, you know, hey, you know, you blow me, I'll, you know, put a good word for you. You know, apparently. That was these, a different, that was a different woman actually that came to the defense of the first woman who posted the screenshots. So okay. Well, that was, but, that was a different person accusing that. Well, it was just Bill's, uh, the, Bill's the case. She, he, he, uh, he propositioned her to give him oral sex in exchange for his agent's phone number is what she said. Yeah. I think her name was, I think her name was not Molly, right? It's in the article I posted. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I think I saw that, that, uh, that tweet and you know, that's true. You know, that that's fucked up, you know, it's not illegal, but it's fucked up. You know, if you're doing stuff like that, you know, so, you know, that, that paints a picture of him. That's not very flattering. Um, but you know, there's a lot of scumbags out there. And if you think about this: how many women? I mean, she told me, I guess, to go fuck himself and didn't do it. But how many women have been desperate enough to take him up on that proposition? I guess you keep doing it until you know, until it works. You know, if you're going to do be, that kind of thing. And to be clear, the it was the grown woman who came to her defense that said she was propositioned for oral sex. She's the one that told him to fuck off. Not the 17 year old, which he apparently, apparently was, still, was grooming. Was still, he, she said she was still messaging, getting messages from him as of now. Uh, these, mm -hmm. these DMS were from 2020 when she was 17. Uh, so she's, but she's much older now. I think it was 2020. I'm pretty sure that's right. Okay. Uh, so uh, two so, separate, just, just trying to make sure we keep those two. Right. Uh, two, so far, there are just two uh, two people who have stepped forward. Two women who stepped forward. There was two reference in that article. Actually, if you go online, there's many more. Um, how many of them are you know credible people? I, I don't have any idea. Uh, but there's there are people coming out of the woodwork. But it is as you said uh, that if you don't like Ed Pisker, now's your time to shine, right? Oh and yeah. Why, while you were talking, first of all, uh, let me just say what up to uh, Omni Mary. I'm in. Omni Mary, I'm in. What's up, man? Thanks for coming. Hey. And Sledhead mentions uh, AKA PAD, which I'm not familiar with that. Uh, I know. Oh, that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's one people. of the accounts that just like most of his, uh, his, in, it's like he's obsessed with Ed Piscor and shitting on Ed Piscor. It's like he, that's one of the accounts I was talking about. I didn't want to name him, but yeah, yeah, that's one of them right there. Yeah. That's, uh, and uh, and Hooked on Juno mentions that Ed Pisker was known to call other artists jobbers, which is a wrestling term uh, for someone who's coming in to lose, I'm assuming, right? Am I getting that right, Hooked on Juno? Uh, mm -hmm. But I, I've seen many people mention that, his disdain for other artists kind of thing. We got Space Case cards sneaking in. What's up, man? Thanks for coming through. We're talking Ed Pisker drama. Hey, I, posted case. 
I posted a link in the chat if anybody uh, has no idea what we're talking about. You want to get the cliff notes. Uh, that comicsbeat.com article is pretty good on it. Um, mm -hmm. and, and they get a, a lot of information. We also got Ross sneaking in here. What's up, What's Ross? Up, Ross? Thanks for coming through, man. Good to see you. Absolutely. Uh, but what I was thinking is that um, as far as what should we do about that, you know, like you said, what he did is not illegal. I don't, as far as I know, but it is super creepy. And so my at attitude is not that um, he should be canceled, but it is what the, what the first accuser said was that she was just putting this out there uh, so that other young girls can know what kind of know what they're dealing with. And mm -hmm. uh, I don't have a problem with that at all. And I think that should be absolutely be the consequence of this is not that he necessarily gets canceled, but you know, he carries this like a scarlet letter. You know, this is something that we all know about you. We know what you're about. And uh, and we're telling any young women around us that might come into contact with you to watch out for your creepy ass. You know, it's just one of those things. And, you know, the thing, one of the things that is, to me, in my opinion, is kind of damning is that he doesn't, he, he has not said anything. Because when you don't say anything, we're just waiting for it to blow over. I mean, to me, I, I would just, if, if it were me, you know, I would, God forbid, anything ever happened. I've never done that kind of shit. But anything anything like that would ever happen, I would just meet it head on. Either you did do it or you didn't do it. If you didn't do it, prove you, you know, hey, I just deny it and, and, and stand by it. Or if you did do it, say, hey, you know, I did some stupid shit. You know, I, I fucked up. You know, I, I did this. You know, I, it was the wrong thing to do. And, and, and just... We embrace it because once you embrace something and you own it, you know that that at least takes some of the edge off of it. But just like you know, not saying anything or I mean, it's, you do what you want to do in your own situation, but it, it doesn't look good, man. I mean, when once you own something and you take responsibility, because nobody takes accountability or responsibility for anything these days, man. They either just deny it or they lie. You know, it's like the cover up is always worse than the crime. Not anymore. The cover up is what fixes everything these days. Yeah, well, that's that's not encouraging at all either, right? Yep, there you go. The government. Uh, let's, let's, yeah, let's not. We can go. We can go way down. That hashtag, that, that, that. hashtag Epstein. Epstein. Did so. There you go. There you go. <laughs> you know, problem solved. There you go. Yeah. So you know. Yeah, you know. So and another instance is like a uh, Shohei Otani. Shohei Otani is like most beloved man in America, pretty much, you know, and he, uh, people are just jumping to his defense and they don't know the, the story. I mean, the story has changed a couple of times now, you know, he, maybe I he was... did, maybe he didn't, you know, but they love Shohei though. Oh, I don't want to believe Shohei has, has done a bad thing because I love and, him. And that is such a boon for, I was thinking about that today is that the fact that there are so many people in baseball um fandom who don't want this to be true oh my god no and and that's gonna help him so much you know because oh my god look i don't know the truth but man come on now dude talk about your money your interpreter has your interpreter has the ability to take four and a half million dollars from you what kind of is he your accountant too what is going on with this relationship it's super fishy but the thing that he has going for him is like if you were gambling, this would be the dumbest way to do it. Like this, a, a complete idiot would do it this way, right? So, uh, I don't know, man. It, it, you know, it, it doesn't look good for Shohei because he changed his story, and and like, like you said, his interpreter is not just some guy he hired off the street. You know, this is his, his companion for many years. Yeah, this is the guy that he's been around with, and they, they know each other. I mean, it's one of his closest comrades you know i mean if you don't know what's going on with him you, you don't know he's like siphoning and millions out of you i know yeah. you got lots of millions but you don't it's miss up four, five million it's, <laughs> it's, very it's hard to believe you know and there he's not he's not talking he's not you know taking any questions through his new interpreter so you can take that for what it's worth <laughs> you, you, see what pete rose, you see what pete rose said no Pete Rose was like, man, I should have had an interpreter. Damn. <laughs> I should have had an interpreter. <laughs> That's awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. Oh, my God. Yeah. And poor Pete trying to, you know, he signed autographs for a living. You know, this, this guy should be in the Hall of Fame. He leads the he leads the major leagues in hits. 
and all he did was like bet on something other than baseball and not even in, in uh you know his team maybe it was baseball but it wasn't the reds it wasn't his team or so it was something like that it was some really distant thing he's banned for life without any any possibility of uh coming back in and that's another question they don't like pete rose pete rose used to say his speak his mind is pete rose used to talk shit to people if they don't like you man that, that weighs a lot into what what's said you know so well, at uh, the end of the day it's not going to matter what baseball fans want because it, the feds are involved now so it's going to come down to what do they want and is there yes. someone is there someone epstein didn't kill himself powerful enough uh to make this go away <laughs> i don't know well, uh, the commissioner of baseball is a, he's what, the worst commissioner of all the commissioners. He, I don't think he even really likes baseball. I mean, he just gets one of these bean counter guys that works for the owners. That's what the commissioner's job anyway is to do the bidding of the owners. And he's just not really, a, a, I don't know, he's going to probably do what's best for the business. And what's best for the business may be to cover this stuff up or to just make it go away somehow and have his interpreter fall on his sword and just say that's the end and show, hey, if you are messing with anything, you know, don't you do that again. So we'll see what's going to happen with that. We got P. Higgs sneaking in and he says the lesson here is never do anything in the dark that you don't want to come to light. And uh, there's some things that I do in the dark, P. Higgs. <laughs> I don't necessarily want. You better watch it. Watch yourself. I don't need anybody knowing what I'm looking, what my Pornhub search terms are. Okay. <laughs> well, you um, know, as, as long as you're looking at, you know, grown women, and there's no, it's none of your business, and none, nobody else's business. You know, like it's because they out there doing it, and there's no law against doing it, so there's no law against looking at it. You know, that's one of the things I said last night. Is like it does say something about you if you're a 38 year old man, because at the time he was 38. And you're and you're D, you're sliding into the DMs of seventeen year old girls. It says something about you because if my if my wife divorced me, because I'm not divorcing her. So if she divorced me, <laughs> uh, get that out of my head. I, right? I would be searching. You know, I would be just with milfs all day, big bone milfs, grown ass <laughs> women. It's my wheelhouse, dog. <laughs> she can have it if she wants it. I'm sure she can. <laughs> they, they call me the Babe Ruth. The babe Ruth, the 40 plus year old Mills, baby. That's me. That's, that's, uh, that, that's, uh, yeah, there's no doubt in my mind. That's where you'd be, my friend. <laughs> so, <laughs> I saw Dynamite in here somewhere. I even played his clip. So, uh, hey, Dynamite, where are you? Uh, I know you're out there somewhere. Chris, there you are not. Out there? We got Chris Gibson in the house, and no, you are not too late to Feral Talk. We haven't even got to the damn books. I guess we should probably do that because we got a guest, too. Oh, yeah, we got a guest. I want to keep him. Uh, we had at 6.30 already. My God, man. It's time yeah. to when you're talking about uh, controversial stuff. There's yeah. dynamite. What's nobody wanted on? to talk about it with me last night. It was crazy. I thought that when people come out the woodwork to talk about it, but nobody wanted to talk about it. Uh, I, I, I was surprised too, but there's not a lot out there. You know, there's not a lot of concrete hey, stuff. Hey, what do you say? Yeah, what do you say? Yeah, there's no arguments here. You know, there's no, yeah, there's no ambiguity. I mean, MLB you know? was a non profit until 2008. Really? Oh, uh, I didn't know that. I, I, oh, you think I would know true? that stuff? I don't know. I don't know. Seems like know. they're making a lot, or maybe you're just the MLB portion of it, not the teams. That might be what you mean, actually. Yeah, yeah. Good point, Ross. I've, I've made that same point about uh, Otani and Jordan. I mean, people say, "Oh, Otani has all this money. Why would he gamble? Why would he gamble? Are you kidding me? Gambling is not about making money. It's about the thrill. It's the thrill of the win. I mean, well, money is great too. But you know, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, am I wrong on this? Or you know, I don't know. Is why he didn't suspend Jordan? That's considered a conspiracy theory, really, and it's one that I kind of believe, but. The thing about it is, like, why did they let him come back if that's true? The heat died down. And the same thing will happen with this. You know, as soon as the, people won't remember this shit two years from now, Otani is like, you know, pitching in the World Series and hitting the home runs and shit. Nobody's going to remember that. Yeah, we have seen, remember that. We seem to have a shorter memory than ever. Oh, my God. It's something yeah. they're putting in the food, I think. <laughs> it must be. All right, so we're going to skip all the other stuff and go right to our special guest. Um, this is Thomas, excuse me, Thomas Nichols from TN Comics. And uh, Thomas is waiting in the wings. They're going to bring him out there right now. 
Hey, hey what's going on, y'all? How, how y'all you doing, doing, man? Good, good. I'm how about doing, you? I'm doing good. I'm doing great. You know what I mean? Excited to be here. This is uh I've been watching y'all for a little bit and enjoyed y'all show. The minute I saw the shot in the in the background, I'm gonna go a lot of y'all was like, <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta watch this. I gotta watch this. <laughs> this is this is gonna be great. So I'm excited. Shot A all day, brother. All, all day, day, man. All day. Shot day, y'all do. Yep, that's, uh, that's, my that's a big giveaway right Mommy. there. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got all the albums on vinyl. They released the, the whole collection of them on vinyl, so I bought them all. They probably cost like a hundred bucks. Oh, I do anything. I do. All I remastered and everything. It's amazing. Man. So, I wish I kept all those, fun. man. I had to get rid of some albums when we moved, but uh, oh, uh, you I got rid of those. I, I I kept I, I put all the CDs on my computer, but it's not the same. You know, I still got the music. <laughs> But I don't have that. I don't have the albums, you know. It's not the uh, same. It's not. it's not the same as the physicals, you know. It's yeah. Not the same, man. I'm finding that out now. Yeah. I'm I'm, I'm, re, <laughs> I'm re, uh, re acquiring my my vinyl collection, so I'm, I'm hoping to get some her music back in my collection too. Well, they definitely so, putting a lot of it out, so. Yeah. yeah hope it's, it's like about Sade. If you're in the mood for a Sade song, you can almost pick any of them because they, they, they're they all the same, you know. But like, it's That's only nice. some Sade. What you know? is? It's so hard to pick a favorite though, and I but I do have a favorite. What is your favorite Sade song? Uh, uh, by your side. That's a good one. That's a good one. You know, honestly, clean heart. Clean heart is 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 a mention of honorable mentions. Clean heart. Uh, do you have one, Lorenzo? I'd say, um, your love is king. Probably is one of my favorites. That's a good yeah. One. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mine is <laughs> mine is skin it. skin off of her last album. I love that song so much. That's it. Ooh, later album. Fire. Okay. It's so good. Fire. Oh, yeah. There are so many to choose. I have many, many, many favorite shot. I can play that shit all day. Like you know, shot all, <laughs> all day. All day. Literally. All, day. all day, man. <laughs> you can't go wrong, yo. You cannot yeah. go wrong. Oh. I know. Great mood music. You know what I'm saying? It's, oh, for uh, sure. That's <laughs> if you're trying to clean the house. It gets yeah. it done. Yeah. It, gets, yeah. it gets it done. <laughs> it's all, but she also goes by Sade. The, it is the band's name, but it's right. she is also Sade. Mm-hmm. Even though her real name is Helen. Uh, she is also, I mean, her superhero name is Sade. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like uh, it's like, it's like, the, it's like the, the the citizen name, but yeah. Sade is the, when it's time to shine, when it's time to save the world, it's Sade. Yeah, Willie's got one like a tattoo. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, good I mean, you song. can't give a wrong answer. There's no wrong. You, you really can't. You really can't. <laughs> it's it's you hard can't. to. Oh man, that's awesome. Man, so I was just on my one of my rare. I'm never on Instagram as much as I should be, but I was on Instagram <laughs> and I was checking out stuff, you know. And uh, I think you sent me a, you know, a DM, and I was I checked out your stuff. Like, wow, this this is amazing. Uh, I honestly did not get to read the book yet, but I saw the artwork, and I and I and I saw your uh, your your website, and uh, your work is great, man. I mean, the, the artist's work and your writing is uh, it's great stuff. So talk what a little bit about the, um, what's that? What's the question? What's, what's, the, what's the website? The website? Oh, Let TN Comedy. Here. Uh, dot net tn comedy that's right because he's a comedian also he's a stand-up comedian uh you are a stand-up comedian i'm just talking directly to you i'm <laughs> talking about you <laughs> yeah see not even here let's talk to someone else <laughs> you're a comedian also yeah yeah and, yeah uh, and uh and you and i saw i call it your routine and it's pretty dope too so i'm like uh, thank you i appreciate like, that you know like talented folks go, go, go on talent you know that's, that's just that's just amazing man uh, so talk a little bit about the, the the books. Well, the comic books came about of me just wanting to do something that I feel has never been done, as well as just having a passion for comic books. Um, mm-hmm. And doing the first series that I did, which was Just Us Cops, which is a buddy cop comedy about two cops that arrest old cartoon characters. I was wondering why that has never been done. And I was like, this is a great idea. This is fantastic. It's such a, it's a concept that's so simple. But nobody's done it. And I was like, yeah. why not? So I started doing that. And uh, I didn't think it was going to sell. Because, I mean, cops get a bad rep, if you've been honest. And mm-hmm. I was like, nobody's going to buy this. But I like doing it. It's hilarious. So I'm going to do it anyway. And so I started doing them and making them. People started buying them up. And as time went by over the years, um, I ended up doing T-Horror. I'm a big horror fan. Horror movies. Uh, I, that's all I really watch that in cartoons 
And so I started to develop those books and coming out with T-Horror. And that's, that's where I'm at right now. That's been about six years now. Six years yeah. ago, you, you self-published uh, Just Us Cops? Yep. About about six or seven, something like that. Okay. I try to do a book a year. Um, my schedule with the comedy and stuff is kind of is really hectic sometimes. So I don't really have time, and I don't want to put too much pressure on getting books out like that. If I don't want to, I don't want to um, overload myself yeah. with the work and then not like what I have. I want to still enjoy writing them, so I take my time writing each book. Okay, so you just write the the comics, right? You're not the the yeah. artist in any of them. Okay. I um, wish I could draw. I wish I could draw, man. I, yeah, Lorenzo would respect you more if you did both. Oh, that's I not true. <laughs> believe, believe me, if I could Look. find a collaborator, I would love to collaborate. <laughs> it's a lot easier when there's more than one person doing the book. Oh, man, it's, it's the, the talent that is out there, man. That was the thing with Just Us Cops, too. Um, I, I ran into so many different artists that I wanted to work with all of them. Like It was, wasn't one of them that I didn't want to work with. Um, and that was where the term for T horror came. Cause the minute I started doing T horror each, I wanted each book to be catered to different story to look different. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have a different artist do, uh, each story. And I have all these artists that send me submissions from just those cops and they're going to be doing some of the T horror books. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, so Reminds you guys are just, coin. yeah, yeah. The, the silver, what is that? The silver, silver coin. coin. Yeah. The silver coin. Yeah. Silver coins. Uh huh. That the I think it was an image thing. Yeah, that was cool perfect. though. They had different writers. I mean, you, different writers and different artists on each book, and it was a different story. So that sounds dope. It works. It works yeah. because uh, not saying that artists can't do different styles, but sometimes the, their styles don't fit the story that you have. And then it's kind of like, all right, now how can we make this work? Because I mean, I I can look at an artist and be like, this this dude does great work for like a forest kind of store, something that takes place in a forest. I can see his art style fitting, but then I can find another artist and say something like she does great for like a something that takes place in the 1800s. Mm -hmm. Let's try to figure out who, who where the story can go, you know, and it's great yeah, to be able to work with these people. Just like Silver Coin and you saw, we miss Silver Coin. So uh, we'll de we're definitely down for something like that, man. That's a great concept. Absolutely. I mean, horror anthologies are all the rage right now, man. This, I love it, man. A lot of it's good ones. Thing that, the thing that'll be better, I think, is that silver coin is tied to a story <laughs> about a particular coin, mm -hmm. uh, whereas what you're doing seems to be wide open. You can do whatever you want book to book. So there that's going to be a lot more adventurous, I feel like. So, yeah, I'm feeling that. Yeah, I've been I've been trying to do something different with the horror stuff. I, I've read a couple some of the horror stuff over the years. And uh, my my the one that got me back into because I stopped reading comic books for a while, and the one that got me back into comic books was the Twenty Eight Days Later series. Oh wow! Um, I love that book series, right now. dude. Yep. Oh my god! I bought I bought because I'm a big fan of that movie. That's possibly my favorite movie of all time. And I, wow. which one? Because there's multiple one. Which one is it? The Twenty Eight Days Later one. Twenty Eight Days. What is, yeah, Twenty Eight Days. What does it start with, or what is the number? How does it work? It's like sixty. Or you tell me. You sounds like you probably know. <laughs> what, 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 what you mean? What you mean for the number? There's like, multiple. Was, is there not multiple oh, this, movies with different yeah. names? <clears throat> There's twenty. No, it's only twenty eight days later than twenty eight weeks later. Right now. Oh, okay. 20, That's what twenty eight I mean. years later is coming out. They making it right now. It's, they started filming it, but it's been in talks for years. So I'm not yes. gonna okay. sit here and okay. say that it's gonna come out. But they talk about filming it or whatever. But twenty eight days later. Love it. But I will say this about 28 Weeks. Greatest opening scene in a horror movie that you're ever going to see. Is that the one where the dude abandons his weeks. family? Is that the one? Yes. Yeah. Oh, my one. God. I saw that scene. I was like, yeah, I'm never Man. watching this movie. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm never watching it. I have it's to watch that happen. now. I haven't seen that sequel. Okay. Because that was absolutely <laughs> horrific oh, and man. terrible, dude. I'm like, no, fuck this movie. <laughs> <laughs> that scene is such a it's, it's such a messed up, dude. Oh, it's messed up. Don't watch it with your loved ones. Don't watch it with your yeah, wife. Dude, <laughs> don't do that. Just watch it by yourself. That's all you gotta do. Just watch it by yourself. That's usually the way I watch all my horror movies because Jan does not like horror movies. So. <laughs> I she won't, she won't like that one at all. Oh, no, like no, all. no, you know what? I need to cut that. I'm gonna cut that up and share that on Instagram. It's gonna. Go 
you're giving my ideas now. We got ideas. That bro. opening scene is <laughs> messed up, dude. Yeah, Cause that's all someone shared it on, on social media and that's all I've ever seen of that movie. And that's all I ever need to see. <laughs> <That's my movie. laughs> oh man. But yeah, that movie alone, man, got me back into comic books. And then I started playing a lot of the older video games that I used to play as a kid and found out that shadow man had a comic book. So I started hunting those books down. Shadow man is possibly my favorite game of all time. Started hunting those books down, and then uh, I mean, I was hunting them down, going, I fly, taking flights to like New York and all this shit just to get the books. The so the copies. old ones, wow. not the modern. Not are you on the modern ones? Didn't Colin Bunn right? I'm on all series? of them. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, he did. And I, I'll be honest, I, well, I wasn't a fan. Yeah, he really lost yeah. me on that. He, but he's the older one, the older ones that came out with '89 up to like I think 2000. I'm gonna say 2000, about '95. I got all those. That's the original Valiant run, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Big fan of those. And um, yeah, those those books alone just inspired me to get into comic books again. And I haven't stopped since. Wow. So horror is your favorite genre then? Uh, overall, yes. Yeah, okay. Comes to anything else, horror. And then, I mean, of course, comedy. I do stand up. I was of say, course. No, what about comedy? <laughs> oh, comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, that's I, I that would be a up comedy versus be a comedy books is a whole different thing though you know <laughs> that's true i get you though but stand up you no know, there's the old saying that uh you know uh death is easy but comedy is hard you know i gotta believe oh, that man, man. because it's you rough. can you say if you were a singer for instance you know you can do that same song like uh, in your same set like every night <laughs> everybody comes in like hey, sing my song uh, right. i'm singing all my songs but can you really do the same comedy set every night? I don't think not you can. In this, not no. in this era. If people I mean, have you, phones and put it on YouTube. That too. People, that's the thing. I kind of, It was a conversation that I've had a long time ago about how cell phones and cameras are literally ruining comedy because it's, it's supposed to be a like a surprise. Comedy is supposed mm-hmm. to be a surprise. It's so much <laughs> yeah, better know. when you don't know what's going to happen. And uh, when people record shows and stuff like that. It's kind of just like, why are we doing this? Yeah, this is for you and this is for the people in the room. <laughs> to live, enjoy. live in the moment. Yeah, yeah. What are we doing? Like people outside didn't pay for to see it. You just paid to see this. Now you give it to them for free. What are we doing? Yeah. Like, it's all. So that 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 was a whole thing. But um, comedy is just it helped me become a better writer for sure for the books. So I, I, oh, I wow. changed that for the world. I've been doing comedy for like fifteen years. <laughs> wow, man. It's my. It, I started right out of high school. I knew I wanted to do it from. Wow, man! God bless, man. That's thank you. <laughs> I, I gotta catch a flight tomorrow. <laughs> really? Go, oh, wow. gotta, I'll be in Phoenix tomorrow. To Where are you located? There. Are you on the uh, East Coast? Or? I'm in I'm in Colorado right now. Okay, okay. So you kind of out west Denver, right now. So you're not that Denver far. Denver area. Yeah, uh, I'm Fort Collins, so I'm an hour north of Denver. Okay, but I go to Denver oh. quite a bit. There's a lot of shows down there. So I wanted to live in Denver. My wife said no, though. <laughs> Wait, where, where, where you? Where y'all at? I'm in Kansas City. He's in the PNW. What up oh, to Chris man. Gibson, real quick? Thanks for coming through, Chris. I, I, I'm in the Pacific Northwest. All I used to live in Seattle. I'm up there. No all kidding. The time. Yeah, oh, man. Man, I'm up there all the time. In Kansas City, I'm 100 percent there. I was there a lot last year. Oh I'm man, really surprised if I'm through there again. And I'm down to yeah. Olympia, man. If next time you're out this way, oh, hit me up, man. I got you. I lived in Renton for like three years. Oh, so okay. I'll be there. I met my wife out there and everything. And we'd be out. Ooh. There. That's awesome, oh, man. We got so we got another PNW. Another <laughs> PNW. <laughs> no, don't get me wrong. Though. Though. <laughs> I'm born and raised in Dallas, Texas, though. Don't get me wrong. Oh, oh really? Texas. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. God. Yeah. Born and raised <laughs> in Dallas, Texas. Uh, but you know, I started doing the comic books in Seattle. That's where I found my first artist to really do the book. I, I tried nice. to do it in Dallas, and it wasn't working out. So I just kind of like stopped for a while, trying to pursue it. I had the script and everything, but I just stopped, and then I moved. I ended up finding some artists out there to get the first Just Us Cops done. And then from there, it's been going forward, you know. Yeah, I, I, I see P. Hayes has a question, too. But I have a question I want to ask first because <laughs> I'm going to ask the first question. Um, <laughs> finding, you say, finding an artist, uh, did you just, how did you do that? You just, like, uh, looked on, like, deviant art or something? Uh, how did you put the feelers out to look for an artist? And do you pay them out of your own uh, your own expenses, or how does that work uh, as far as bringing um, outside artists? Well, <laughs> no, no, you good, you good. Now, um, I, I literally went to Facebook. Huh. I, the first, well, the first artist I found, 
uh, I was a friend. Uh, I knew I through comedy. I met her through comedy, and she mm. lived in Canada. But she, her friend, connected her to me. Okay. That was a whole thing. So we we worked through that. She did the first book for me. And she gave me some pointers on how to find other artists because she wouldn't be work, able to work on the next one because she had like some major stuff going on, like major deals going on. So I was like, all right, cool. I got to find another artist. At that moment, when she said she wasn't going to be able to do the second book, I thought I was done. I thought it was over with. But I was like, I can't, I, I wrote the next script for it. It is so good. I got to get this done. I got to get this drawn out. So yeah. I went to a Facebook art, joined a bunch of Facebook artist groups. And um, I started posting in those groups and you get nothing but submissions, just tons mm-hmm. of like links sent to you, DMs sent to you. I, it was crazy. And so that whole, for like a good week, I'm just looking through submissions on who could do this wow. book for me. And and, and I found Emi, he, he's been doing an amazing job for me. Um, wow. He's super talented. I found him, he lives in um, Argentina. Oh, okay. He, does this, he doesn't speak any English, right? And so we got to use Google Translator the whole time to make oh. to make it work. And this dude has been crushing it. And it's amazing how you know technology is able to bring oh, it. The world is crazy, ain't it? Yeah, it's it, it's, it's impressive, man. You know, uh, social media. Who knew? I mean, uh... I, that, that's the thing, man. I I, I I was scared to do it because well, I was obvious. like, I'm just running to some random person who can probably scam me or something. This is. Uh-huh. Like, what are we gonna do? And and when it came to that part with the money part, I, I put a big tour together um to raise the money to do the book. So once um he might send me his price for the books, I was like, all right, cool. At least when I get half of that, I will let him know that we can start. We okay. Can start. So I booked a big tour, did a bunch of shows, raised the money, and then um immediately started the book after that. And he was done within maybe maybe two months maybe something like that but that was in the midst of just us understanding what's going on so now he can get a book done within a month and i you know it's that kind of it, this dude is fast man he, that's good speed right it. there he kills it. a book a month and man I, I can't see how some artists can put, crank out more than one a month that's just like jack kirby shit. that's what i was saying, <laughs> that's what I was saying. I'm like how are you doing this yeah. man oh, he's been wow. doing it man he's been doing really talented man really talented that's amazing. So he does all the art. He does like well, inking, counseling, yeah. coloring, and all that. Yeah, he does Sweet. all of that, man. The whole Sorry. shebang. Yeah. All right. And, and, wow. 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 In a yeah. month. Wow. That's just amazing. A month, <laughs> man. I have to tell him to slow down sometimes. Like, wait, hold on, wait, because I don't have all. I, I know, have some right? of the money. I got, uh-huh. got it all correct. But just wait a little bit, dude. Like, hold on, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but but he's he's talented. He's a good dude. We talk about comic books all the time, and he loves Green Lantern. So you know we talk about Green Lantern from time to time. But wow. uh, he he's talented, man. And the other, a lot of other artists that I find out through those submissions are, and I plan on working with them really soon. Oh, very cool. All right. So P Higgs has a question. I think uh, he refined his question. So I'll put this one yet. Put this one. Up. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Come on, question pop up. I have the same. I have this. I try to be funny on Instagram, so I have this same problem where, like, is it funny or is it just funny in my head? You know, it's it's hard. Okay. (laughs) See, first question: How do you know how to separate what is funny from what isn't? Uh, I tend to come up with funny stuff in my head, but never know if other people find it funny. Huh? Okay. Um. When it comes to stuff like that, I mean, you got to, in a way, you find your funny and people will find your funny. You find your funny and people will find your funny. You don't have to, everybody doesn't have to like your funny. Everybody doesn't have to like it. We got to get, we got to, we got to, we got to get that. And people say, everybody's not going to like you, man. And it's fine. It's That's okay. okay. That's the thing. It's okay, That's man. Thing. So it's, 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 exactly. it's, it's yeah. like, you know, your, your sense of humor is going to, going to, appeal to somebody and that's when it comes to comedy even that's the kind of audience you want those people that like your humor you don't want people yes. to come back to your show that don't like your humor yes i mean comedy I mean, it's like art you know it's subjective you know 100 percent. and it's just like it's just like same thing with comic books some people don't like the books some people don't like horror books at all and they won't oh. buy them like that's perfect that's good that's cool it's yeah. bad that i know that but i have just those cops here it's a buddy cop and they usually <laughs> they end up buying one of the two but it's it's just that kind of thing. It's like everybody's not going to like you, and it's okay. You variety, variety. It's about variety. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, and that's just like about comedy in general, about finding your audience. You know, yeah. you find your funny, as you say. You know, you so do. that's what you're gonna do, man. Oh, that's those awesome. are the one that's gonna come up to you and talk to you after the show. Those are the ones yeah. that are gonna <laughs> appreciate what you do. If it if from the show to the to the comic books to anything that you do, you just find your audience, and it's hard to do that because you gotta. There's a more than a billion people on this earth, so you just gotta find them, of course. And um, but those people that that relate to you are gonna just ride for you every time. Yep. Every time. And yeah. it's fun to see that. It's fun yeah. to have that, just, that group of people to do that for you. Yeah. Once you find your, your audience and that, that that's that's a blessing right there. That's uh 100%. that's a good thing. So what's new uh as far as uh the comic books go? Uh know if you got something new coming out, I think a, a sequel to the first horror book maybe um, coming out. Well, we got T horror number two out. Ooh. Right now. This just dropped maybe what was this? Uh January, I think. I say it just dropped, but it dropped in like January. <clears throat> oh, hold and up one more time. I didn't uh gotcha. didn't get you in there. There we go. T horror right. number two. Oh, that looks right nice. That looks and nice. uh number two came out uh in January, and it's 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 another add-on to the story. But like I said, every single story is different. So you can jump in wherever you want. Um, and then I'm currently when I go to Phoenix, I will start uh finishing just us cops number seven. Then when I come back, I start working on T Horror number three. So you've had six previous issues of Just Us Cops. Yeah, <clears throat> um, uh, Just Us Cops is is also somewhat of a standalone. You don't need to have all of them to jump in. Where you can jump in wherever you want. You don't have to have all of them. But of course, if you have all of them, you're more immersed in what's going on in the city overall. Mm -hmm. But the uh, Just Us Cops number seven will be dropping, as well as Just Us Cops number eight this year. Wow. And then I plan on dropping T Horror um in October. So we we it's 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 moving. The thing is, man, I I have all this time to think about these stories but as I'm taking these long drives or I'm taking these long flights, and it gives me plenty of time to like map out the story. So it don't take me about a couple of weeks to write it. And I'm already writing as a comedian, so it's just like in my wheelhouse just to do it. Mm -hmm. My wife helps me. She she edits it for me sometimes because I sometimes I get tired of looking at the screen. So she goes back. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I put a period here. You put a period here. I'm like, all right, cool. Oh wow, she helps you edit. Yeah, she does. Yeah, yeah, she helps me edit. Uh, she she loves that kind of stuff. So I, I you, know, you I, got a living editor, man. It's, it's, that's a dream, know, right? She <laughs> right in the next room right there. You know? <laughs> that's awesome. She helps me out a lot, man. So. Oh man, that's I'm great! Glad to be able to do something like this. Man, man, it's so inspiring to hear your story, man. How you're doing it with this, with your comedy, your your dream, and your dream of being a a writer in comics. Man, it's it's just man, it makes me makes me get inspired to do something, get <laughs> off my ass, and get it you in gear. Work. Yeah, get yeah. I mean, get it in. Let's, let's go, let's gotta, go. There's, yeah, there's more series coming. There's more series coming. These two are not going to be the only ones. I tell you this right now. I start writing the new series next year top of next year uh and it will be dropping within that year uh, wow i got a, i got a four book series coming out i ain't talking more about it it's a oh. it's i'm excited about it it's a big deal to me i'm excited because, you gotta come uh, back on when it comes out man we gotta, oh gotta, gotta, man gotta drop it. <laughs> i, I would announce it on here as soon as i get it done uh, i'll bring it over here to y'all that's what i'll do i do that all right I'm we'll sure. hold you to that man we'll breaking hold you news that's what's up <laughs> sure. yeah actually y'all are the only ones that know i never talk about this but <laughs> that series i never talk about but i give y'all the details at some point we'll talk okay okay man i look forward to that man man i can't wait to see it so uh we got the uh, the the website down there, uh, TN Comedy One. Uh, that's the, that's yeah, the, that's the YouTube, YouTube channel. That's the YouTube yeah. channel. Okay, of yeah. uh, man, uh, check out Thomas's work, man. Check out his art. His, his I'm sorry, his 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 writing and his comics, and check out his uh, his comedy. Because man, the dude's a funny dude, man. I mean, I saw thank you, thank you. I, I, I just, to to be so talented, man, it's just not fair. That's not fair though, <laughs> for one young man to be so 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 young and talented and handsome too. Man, what the hell? You know? Oh, oh you gotta it's add just, okay. Yeah, oh, it's, just so, you got, it's so unfair. I, I can't look, turn like that. I got, <laughs> he's got hair, he clearly has hair. And he, he has hair. Has hair. 
<laughs> yeah, sir. So whatever. God that hat can't hide it. That hat can't oh, hide it. Oh man. Oh man, y'all are hilarious. Man. I, I, I appreciate y'all creating a platform like this for, for indie comic writers because there's not a lot of them that do this. Yeah, this is all Lorenzo. Yeah, I'm just here along. I'm just along for the ride. They, 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 without you, would be nothing, son. We we're all in this see, together, see, man. <laughs> you go see yeah. right there, and you know, and, and I, I, I can appreciate that. You know what I mean, man. So uh, uh, is it is there any new comic book companies that y'all are looking at right now? Because like, as ooh. far as like looking forward to reading more from. Me, I say, uh, I love image. I usually love image. <laughs> yeah, image yeah, is the I, standard. I like distillery. I've been enjoying distillery. I, you stole it, man. I was gonna say distillery okay. too. Distillery nice. is a, a right. hot new thing. We got a lot of good creators. It seems, it seems like a more maybe a little harder edge image with distillery is maybe a little bit, you know, with these uh, I got these, you. these different creators getting together. I like stuff like that, I I, you know. That. the the you know the the marvel dc stuff is always going to be there it's always going to have fan base and a stronger fan yeah. base but but the indies are such much more interest so much more interesting to me uh, because there's so much that you can be do that can be done with uh they're, so, they're freer they're just so they're freer, yeah, yeah. Oh, the range God, yeah. the range you can go in yeah. indie is so much better and and, and yeah. once the, the big corporations get in you kind of got to and you're kind of seeing you're seeing that Marvel uh, kind of understand that with things like Ultimate Spider-Man, where they're just resetting everything so that so that they can just do whatever they want. And same thing with like Dark Knights of Steel with DC, where Tom Taylor just reworked everything. <coughs> it's a way to to do new things, um, and mm -hmm. I think for that reason, mm -hmm. I, mean, I, I love Man Cave as well. Yeah, I feel like Marvel should start straying away from heroes too, though. I'm honest. I think they should stray away like a little black, bit from heroes and be like something else. Label. You would yeah. get some kind of a yeah. You would think. I don't know you about the if the suits there would do that, man. They, they're not brave. They, they usually follow. They don't lead. You know, like politicians. You know, they Facts. see which way the wind is blowing and they follow. You know, you'd be, follow a lot yeah. of people would be interested if they were to do like a black label kind of thing where they did different kind of books. I'd be interested. They'd have my attention if they did. I'll read them for sure. You know yeah. what I mean? Because they used to do that kind of stuff back then. DC and Marvel used to do different mm -hmm. stuff. It wasn't always heroes, and now it just seems to be heroes now. I mean, I've been reading a lot of Mad Cave comic books, and those dudes. Yep. Those people, yep, the yep. people out over there. Talk yes. about creativity, man. That, that, uh, is coming back. What's it called? Char is the Char Remains? Char Remains, yes. I think that's a Mad Cave joint, right? Yeah. Dude. Yeah, yeah, amazing. Skeeters, hilarious. Great Skeeters. Dude. Yes, yes, great book, about man. Yeah. <laughs> great book, book. I, book. I yeah. will say this though, the the book that has been got has gotten me so excited every month, and it ain't even a uh, um, Mad K book. It's um, it's uh, beneath the trees. Oh, everybody IDW. Like about that one. You're talking man. about language. You're talking about. Oh, language. I, I missed out. I missed the train on that one. I, I'm, I'm oh bummed. man! When they still I, catch it up, they still catch it up. They they put them out like every other month now. I'm gonna do I, the love, train. I love that. I'm, I'm so yeah, ready for number, whenever it comes out. I'm ready. Oh, that number one. <laughs> that number one shot up. You know, you're not oh, getting okay. one of those. I, I got you on that. One. I think it's like oh, a sixty-five dollar book now, isn't it? It's crazy. Yeah, it's up there. That yeah. book is. That's a really good. And I would love to see a movie about that. I would it's love just, to see that. There's got to be one in the works. It's, it's got to be animated. It. It's got to be animated. animated. It's yes. got to be animated. It's got to be yes. animated. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's, it's, it's the only way it'll work. work. That's the only way it's going to work. The only yeah. way it'll work. You know what yeah. I mean? And, and it's, it's it's certain series, those, wait, IDW, I can't, is it necessarily indie? Really? Yeah, that's indie. I yes, I, I would consider it indie, even though it's, uh, well, I, I don't know, it, you it, know. It may have some big backing and probably some big parent company. But it does. The work definitely says indie to me. For sure. Yeah, yeah that's that's <laughs> one thing. The work says it, but I don't know if the company name is. Because yeah. it's so huge. It's a big company now. It's yeah. kind of like what Images. I don't think Image is indie, but nobody. They are, know. though. If By my definition of indie, they mm -hmm. are. and Because what indie is, is that it's creator owned. Mm -hmm. So okay, Marvel well, and DC yeah, can well, never yeah. be indie because they're not creator owned. But if you go to Image Comics and you create something, it's still yours. I mean, that's what makes you indie. I don't know if IDW is that, though. Actually, I don't know. IDW is into a lot of licensing, too. They, they license, yeah. like, uh, other uh, <coughs> properties, like Star Wars and things like that. Mm. But they do come well, up with creator own properties as well, like like Beneath the Trees and um, and uh, what's the other one? Um, 
Dusk or uh, something about the, the hunger and the dusk. Yeah, yeah. The hunger and the dusk yeah. is another good uh, series. I haven't read that. I know what that is. I haven't read that. I've seen some artwork from it. Beautiful yeah. art, huh? Yeah, I yeah. It looks amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't read that though. <laughs> I gotta read it. A lot I of good see stuff what's going on with, with with IDW, man. I think, but I do say beneath the trees is gonna be. Oh, man. I'm completely caught up on Beneath the Trees, man. Every issue is great. The fourth issue was like, I mean, oh my God, this oh, is happening. Man. This is happening. Oh my God, you know. I haven't read the fourth one. I got the fourth one right here on my desk. Oh, and I haven't yeah. even I haven't had time to read it yet. So you I got a, a long flight. I got a long <laughs> yeah. flight. So <laughs> I got time. Yeah, read that one first. <laughs> for sure. For sure. I like reading. I like reading from like the pre I like reading from number one all the way up again. Like I've been I've been doing that. Like I'll read just to get like a back like like a reminder of what's been going on. I have to do mm -hmm. that. It's the requirement. I read my book. <laughs> I will, I read all my books at least three times because I have to go back and remind myself what's happening all the time. You gotta do that sometimes. Oh yeah, you gotta do that. I wish they would include like a preview of what happened in the last one to a degree, yeah, but they do. But it's not like a. It's not enough. Like a TV not show, enough. you know, like last time yeah. on Beecher, you know, this happened, you know, whatever, you know, they have a recap <laughs> right at the beginning. Yeah, I I know, it. could some explain Black Label? Yeah, I yeah. mean. I, I did. I think I probably did uh, review um, Nice House because it was such an exception. Uh, you know, it's a DC product. It's my, by James Tinian. And I kind of like made an exception because it's such a good book. It, it seems like an indie book. Uh, and that's one of the few non-Batman titles on Black Label, come to think of it, I think, is a Nice House on the Lake. Everything else is pretty much a Batman title. Yeah, everything, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so yeah, uh, that's that's pretty much as far as, far as I know, Chris. That's, that's, that's swamp what's thing. That. that swamp thing was on the black label. Oh yeah, that swamp thing, right? But that Jeff well, Lemire, hero or Jason? Yeah, 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 hero. Which which I would love to see a movie on. I don't see why he's not in the movie either. Yeah, uh, I'm tired swamp of that man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let me get a, yeah, get a movie, man. Come on, dude. Come a, on, a man. Good swamp thing movie. A good swamp. Just thing. one. Um, yeah. Just one. <laughs> And I didn't know that Man Thing came out before Swamp Thing. Did anybody else realize? Oh, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you yeah, think Swamp Thing yeah. was first, but Man Thing was first. <laughs> yeah. Thing. Sure. Level. yeah. All right, uh, Thomas. Man, we're gonna move it on to the uh, the next session now. But it's great having you on, man. Thanks for coming on and talking hey, about thank your you all, man. your stuff. Link, man. Uh, links are in the chat. You. TNComedy.net. Definitely check it out. And you run all of your stuff through your website. Then you're not doing Kickstarter or anything. It's all through your website. Yes, yeah, so all through my website. Or you can hit me up on Instagram. I hit you up on we'll give you any information on that. You can type in um TN Comedy on Instagram. You'll see me on there. Or you can type in TN Comic Books on Instagram, and I will be right up there. Um, I, I did release an album, a comedy album. So if you want to listen to my comedy, you go to uh <laughs> Bandcamp.com backslash TN comedy and my album should come up. If not, nice. you can find it on my website, TN Comedy. You can find everything on TN Comedy. Okay. Yeah, so that's what I'm talking about. This man's doing it. He's got his website. Try to. Out there. Try to. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to. Oh man. Hey, well, thanks for coming on, Thomas. Man, uh, good luck to you, man. And next, well, next, when next, when that next book is ready to come out, man, hit me up, man. Just I got you. I got you. I definitely, I definitely make that happen for y'all. Thank y'all. <laughs> hey, That's thank you, man. Up, man. Great stuff. Dot A all day. Take care. Hey. All day. Peace out. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. Finally, I'm the star of the show. Right, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Finally. More time for Marcus. <laughs> it's a coup. <laughs> oh man, that, that's just fantastic. All right, so um, nice. I'm gonna. <laughs> I mean, you see the, a cat doing it like that, man. It's like, damn. Yeah, yeah, it's impressive, I just, man. I just need to just not sleep. I need to sleep less. I need to. It's like. It's like. Started. I I need to fund my comic book. How can I do that? Let me book a huge tour, and then boom, it's done. Like that's just that's go get it stuff right there, man. That's dope. It is so, man. Definitely check that out. He's doing two of the hardest things in the world, man. He's a comedian, a stand-up comedian, and he's publishing his own comic books. What <laughs> the fuck, man? What's my excuse? God, damn. hey, <laughs> sledhead, <laughs> sledhead. You're talking to a man who loves dick. All right. Uh, <laughs> just, just like that TV show of, about, uh, uh, I forget what it's about, but maybe, maybe about Dick. I'm not sure. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, gonna run through my stuff that I pulled this week. We get week. books this week. We did. And my stack is about the same size as your stack, man. So, uh, right. actually, I was leaving some out. Hold on, let me get the full. Stack. Oh, you're leaving them out. Oh my god. Okay, here's the full stack right here because we got to include the Somna. Boom. Oh, yeah, there the Somna. It is. I had it. It was a heavy week for me. I almost, uh, almost a hundred dollars. I think. I feel like Ooh, that. wow. That's just, I spent a that's lot of money. It's pretty hefty. I have to tell you. All right. Oh, finally, I'm the star. <laughs> it keeps happening. What's happening with this? <laughs> oh, I got this little weird thing. It's so weird. I have to like uh, move it around. All right. So uh, I want to do it this way anyway. Okay. Well, still learning this thing, boys and girls. First thing I got was uh, Incredible Hulk from Marvel. This is number 10. Number 10 in this uh, this new run here. The the Monster Hulk series. I'm behind on that, and but people started off high on that one, and they seem to have come down. On it. Yeah, well, you know, it hasn't gotten any worse. It's just, uh, you know, it's, it, it's settled. You know, it's, it's still a good book. I just, I'm pretty caught up on. I think, I think I'm, I think I've read number nine. So don't sleep on it. It's still a good book, though. Uh, another Marvel is Ultimate Spider-Man number three. Um, I think the, the ultimate green goblin is finally exposed or revealed. Maybe you don't know who he is, but uh, he finally uh, makes himself known to Spider-Man in this book. There was a cameo in number two. 80s guy, I need five more points from LeBron, please. Oh, God. Speaking of betting. <laughs> I need five more points, please. <laughs> Lakers. Oh, he's a Laker fan. Lakers going down. On uh, this giant over... Stuffed, overpriced, uh, number 300 slash number 18, uh, Miles Morales. This better be good for like a $9 book. I could have got a distillery book for the same price, man. Come on. $9 Marvel? Come on. Come on. You're that just... was crazy how expensive that one was. I know, I was right? Surprised. They it's a never... fat book. It is a fat book, though. It is. But, you know, they never missed an opportunity to, to jack up a price. The nasty. Number, what is this? Number eight. We're coming to the end of this this series pretty soon about this uh, guy who imagined this imaginary friend and he became real. Talk about horror. And the rest of them are, not the rest, but the, I got three issues of Duke. Uh, say like um, uh, number two, number three, and number four, which came out today because I realized I, I didn't have any of those books. So I picked up all three of those, and I, I read number one of Duke, and uh, I loved it. So I mean, why am I not getting more of those, man? It's a, it's a good a series. Of people, a lot of people loving that one. Robbie gave that one a pretty good review today. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, Larry, I'm trying. To, I keep forgetting to look for that book, man. I mean, I, 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 receive, I think about it when the show is going on. I said, make sure to make a note about finding Blackula. And, like, you know, it's one of those things. I, I'll find it eventually. Along with uh, uh, the uh, uh, the one by by Page Dollars, <laughs> Blowtorch, which I haven't been able to find, uh, Hard Road, Black Hammer. I guess this is the end of the end. It's been like a few months since uh, number five came out, which I thought was the end because I was behind on it. So now I guess this is the end of the end, or maybe there's more coming for the end. Who knows? From Jeff Lemire, Great Universe. Uh, and the last one that I picked from the shop is, of course, last week's uh, penultimate book. It's Feral, a cover, number one. I just couldn't, I got it coming from my comic shop, but I uh, couldn't wait to read it. I uh, don't mind having an extra cover of the A cover because uh, the Trish Forstner, Tony Fleece thing is real. Uh, check them out. On I hope it pops. I bought some extra copies so. just in case it does because, you know, I hope I, so. I, I've heard people say that this is better than Stray Dogs. Really? Yeah. Wow. 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 Yeah. Uh, but Robbie, I know Robbie said that at Pop Culture Philosophers today that he said he felt like, and part of it he said was because he's a cat person, not a dog person. But um, uh, that's good. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a both person, so I I look forward to to both of them. Um, I'm, a dog, I'm a dog person. I know. I know. <laughs> I picked this little baby up uh, from uh, from eBay. I didn't pay stupid eBay prices for it. I was reading, um, what was it, Nick's Picks, where he talks about the number three in this original uh, 
series, this limited series, is one of the hardest books to get because of the black cover. So yeah, I was look, I don't see any sticks on that one. It's like a few little color breaks, maybe three tiny cover breaks on the cover. And you look on there on uh, eBay, you find a lot of them that got like this print right here. I hate that print. I think that that fingerprint is missing. Like the, like the, I hate that. I hate that. Just my my OCD is going crazy on that. But this doesn't have any of that, and this was only twenty bucks. So uh, oh, I, that's a great cover. Oh yeah, I was in, I'd get that one slab, man. I'd probably go ahead and slab that one. I may because uh, this is the hardest one to get of this of the uh, in this condition because of that black cover. You know, I'm working on the number one. The number one, I want to get it graded because I got a, a facsimile I can just read. But the number one is um, I want a nine four, but I want to pay more than uh, you know a certain mom, a number for it. Uh, so we'll see about that. Any hustle. All right, that's it for the haul. Now let's that was do fun. Uh, it was, man. <laughs> it was a very short, it's a very short haul. <laughs> so now let's do our what's good segment, which is uh sponsored by uh me and everybody that uh I like and everything like that. So here you go. What's good? <laughs> Right, should I have to go first, sir? Uh, it's up to you, boss. Oh, you, you're running this show. My first, I only have one this week, and Me too. Uh, and because uh, it's not easy, not everything I read is good. Um, I read Thunderbolts, it was interesting, but I, I really didn't feel like I could put that on, on my list. What else? I read Cemetery Kids Don't Die. I did, you know, I wanted to put that on there, but. It didn't really work out. I read a few other things. Oh, I've been reading Scarlet Witch, which I've been enjoying it, but I didn't want to. I wouldn't want to put it uh, on my list here. But I did read Somna, and I think this is it. Right? There's only three issues. I felt like the end. Mm -hmm. What up, Jose? Uh, this third issue, it did feel like the end. And after reading the first one, I was like, I don't know, but I do like the boobies, so I'll keep going. <laughs> uh, and I do love both Becky and Tula Latte's art. I, I really enjoyed it throughout. Uh, but we've got this woman we're living in kind of Winston, not Winston, but kind of Salem witch trials time. And um, and she's got some sort of, you know, one of her friends, one of the towns lady had just got burned at the stake for being a witch. And uh, the main character's husband is kind of the witch guy who's going around finding him or whatever. So, but she seems to be possessed by a demon. It's not really clear what's going on with it because uh, at the end, it's left kind of uh, ambiguous. You don't really, you get to kind of, it's kind of decide what it is at the end and what it all means kind of thing. But I, more than anything, I really enjoyed the art. You have Becky and Tua Lute both doing art. So the art ch style changes from page to page which can throw you off a lot of times, but it works it for me because um, the art seems to ki kind of be going through phases like where you kind of feel a reason for the art change every time it changes. And so it really worked and they're both great artists. So I never had a problem with the both of them doing different styles of art all throughout the book. I really enjoyed it. And uh, so, yeah, it was it was a fun book about uh, the Salem Witch Charles time. And there's a lot of do it, you know, decide what it means kind of thing to it. Uh, so artsy fartsy kind of thing. But I liked it. And I, as I said before, I, I, or maybe I just said it offline before we came on. But like some people complain about these magazine style comics, but I love them because they're so fun to read. They get that you get that extra space for the extra art. And it just feels nicer in your hand than than a floppy does to me. Uh, yeah, the, the story, I, I agree. The story, I thought the story was interesting enough, but the art really does shine in this book more than anything. Uh, but as far as the story, you know, I wasn't sure about it until the end when I decided, okay, I, I do like, I do like the story. So that was enough for me to push it onto the list here. Uh, mm -hmm. and I like distillery, man. They, they're doing interesting stuff. I like the way that, uh, they're using the extra space in this magazine style format to tell stories and I'm in on it. Uh, and uh, happy to add it to my list. Of it's a good, good choice. Yeah, I think um, the first one I really liked because it was like uh, you got the sense of the the oppression of the Salem witch trial era and and what was behind all that, all the misogyny and all that stuff. And yeah. <laughs> and then the, um, of course the boobies help as well, you know. <laughs> and you got the ladies drawing it, so you know 
hey, it's not pornography and women are drawing it, right? So yeah, it's, 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 cool. it's just it's art. It's yeah, art. That's yes, that's it. So I got to I got to read number two to see if I want to pick up number three. But uh, good choice, sir. All right. So yeah, I don't know where Winston Salem came from. I don't know what that was. Winston but. tastes good like a cigarette should. That's for you old folks back in the day. Remember that. Because advertising works, I still remember that shit, even though I never, down. I never smoked. <laughs> I, mean, this guy, yeah. this now, guy. I, would, I would definitely say if if, if, you're crowd. A guy, if you're a guy who gets worked up over uh flavored whiskey, then definitely that book <laughs> not gonna work for you. <laughs> it's not gonna be your cup of tea. Oh gosh, you guys. All right, my choice for what's good is a thing that came out a few weeks ago, Maui Mighty Comics. Uh, this is for the Hawaiian uh, Fire Relief Fund, but not just Maui, but, but for the um, uh, the island of uh, Lahaina and also Maui, where, where uh, that terrible fire took place a few months ago. And Crazy people stories. lost everything. Yeah, yeah, because of the default of, a, I think, of a corporation that, that did some, of course, did some... Uh, uh, Cut some cost, and of course, this resulted in a tragedy. You know, it's, it's all about you know. I didn't know there was a corporation to blame. That's not. Yeah, true. yeah. I think it's it it yeah. It's, it's always a corporation to blame. <laughs> you know, just go go wrong. Uh, but this is like a an anthology of featuring a uh, more uh, led by Mort Todd, who's the editor in chief. And this is from what is it? Uh, one one for how do how they call themselves? Uh, number one, number one comics. It's very simple, right? Right there in front of me. It's a big ass one, and the characters inside of it, right there. I should just, just see the one, <laughs> number one comics. Formerly, uh, they used to be, um, Charlton, a Charlton, uh, and Charlton, what is it? Charlton Neal, I think. Charlton Neal before they changed their name to number one comics. And they got this basically, it's a bunch of. Artists have donated their time. Um, every dollar from this book sale is going toward the fund for uh, for Maui and for the we rebuild the we building for the rebuilding in, in Hawaii. Uh, but there's a page on the back where you can, you know, buy some swag and some some chachis and stuff. And this will go to the artists who donated their time because hey, you know, you know, why not get a chance to. You know, get a little bit of something back for your your time and effort work. So, oh, you haven't found it yet? Oh, I got you. I, I, if I know, I picked one up. I would have picked one up today, man. There's one at the shop. I, I'll, I'll pick it up next time I'm there. Don't worry about. It. I got I got you. Don't oh, worry. The, the man you. coming through. I got you, brother. Um, so the first story in here is uh, by this character called Mister Mixit, and Mister Mixit is clearly. Uh, an amalgam of Spider Man, Blue Beetle, uh, Craven the Hunter, and maybe somebody else, uh, maybe uh, uh, someone else I haven't quite figured out yet. But he's a very, very colorful character, and it's not a really deep story, but it's you know, it's it's beautiful, it's very well drawn, it moves along pretty drawn. quickly. Oh, yeah. And uh, it picks up again at the back of the of the uh, book with a different story. So this this is a, a two part story in this book. Another one is Captain Mercury, which is actually another comic they published. You can tell this is an older book, uh, comic story, not just by the art, but some of the words in here. Like there's a part where Captain Mercury, who comes from Mercury, by the way, and he's made from Mercury. The, the metal, which is <laughs> pretty funny. <clears throat> he meets a doctor and he says, hi, I'm looking for uh, Dr. Penn. If you find me, uh, you go tell Dr. Penn that I'm here. She says, I'm Dr. Penn. So, oh, you're a lady doctor. <laughs> yes, we have lady doctors on earth now. <laughs> so, so you can tell this is a, a dated story, but you know, it's been remastered, recolored uh, by the, the editor, Mr. Todd. And another one they have is Shrinking lady whose name uh, forgets my name right now. Uh, oh, Molecule, uh, Miss Molecule. Miss Molecule is an original story. I can find uh, where she comes up because this is a woman who 
was diagnosed with cancer and they were found a way to shrink her tumors, but to sh when they shrunk her tumors, they also shrunk her. So she's shrunk down now, like, you know, like smaller than the atom. And what she does is she goes inside of people and she like takes care of like medical issues they have. Like she removes, sews up blood clots and stops aneurysms and things like that. So she's found a, a new calling in that. And the funny thing, she has to return to that size, to that min minuscule size to not have her cancer come back. It's, it's kind of a, a funny concept, not funny, but kind of an unusual concept, you know, as far as that goes. Kind of like uh, Jane from Thor. Yeah, 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 yeah. And another one, which is probably the best story in here, is Jan. Jan is a, a character that uh, Charlton used to publish years ago. Uh, Jan was a martial arts uh, warrior kind of a thing. And here he's like, a, he has to work on this boat so he can get back to his home, his home uh, where he used to live. And this racist boat owner is, is like a just total jerk. And the style is just like so very like vintage uh, Frank Miller, Sin City kind of a look. This, this is my favorite, my favorite uh, one in this whole book. So man, this is this alone is worth picking up. The uh, plus is a good cause also the, the eight dollar book. Totally worth it. Nice glossy cover and it's very well uh, published. Well published. Very well presented uh, on on this this. It's very good card stock, or I uh, should say um, paper stock that they're using. Yeah, if you can find this, uh, Maui Mighty Comics, I think uh, mycomicshop.com uh, may have a few copies left. Uh, my, I know my store has one, which I'm going to pick up for Willie. <laughs> so hopefully they don't sell that before I get back there. Uh, that's my what's good for this week. So uh, there's that. Very cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. I like the, the colors were popping on that thing. Oh man, it, it's so. It's, it, I always talk about color therapy, man. This, this is like total bubblegum color therapy just to read this book. It was just in, worth the price of admission just to, you know, just to pick it up and read it. So uh, that's that. All right. So uh, it, we'll, tickles. <laughs> it tickles, it tickles an angel. Oh, are you guys talking dirty again? No, he said, What's this heart button do? And uh, Bill <laughs> said, and who wouldn't want to tickle an angel? There used to be a show called Tickled by an Angel, wasn't it? Uh, I think uh, not too long ago. If I'm not mistaken. Am I misquoting that? I have no idea. <laughs> do angel, is that a thing? I'm just saying what, I'm just telling what I've heard. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's go do these indie comics reviews real quick here. Right, got three books to review. This I was so behind on reading books this week. Like every book that I reviewed, I had to I had to read it yesterday. It's crazy. Um, at least it's still, still fresh in my memory. Like sometimes I what, what was the story about again? Oh yeah, yeah. But anyway, um, so three good books again this week. I want to start with I think last week's um, last week's a penultimate book. Which was Man's Best. If I can find a video for that, let's go with Man's Best. Man's Best. I love the ash can that came out. It gave you a, a, a good insight of what you were going to be getting with this with this book. Uh, well, number one picks up right where the ash can left off. Uh, these cats this one cat and these two dogs are the support animals for this woman who's a doctor on this spaceship uh this spaceship is looking for a place for humans once again because we fucked up earth so we gotta find the next place to fuck up so the cats are just kind of like having or the, the animals are actually are just having fun in the what amounts to a danger room or a hollow deck kind of an area and they're fighting these things called clangers and the doc is just kind of training them to be, I guess, because you never know what might happen on this new world. So you might need the animals to like, you know, to help out a little bit. So they're, they're getting used to force fields. They're getting used to wearing like, uh, one of them has got like a, a robotic leg. And they're getting used to wearing these uh, these 
devices that help them fly and help them, you know, help them kind of fight bad things. And the doc is also joined by this captain. He was kind of like a very stoic guy. The doc is trying to throw him like little hints, like, hey, you know, you know, you might be able to get a little bit of this if you play your cards right. But the doc, you know, but the the, the, the captain is kind of like, ah, I'm, I'm all strictly business, you know. And the, the, the cat, the cat and the dogs kind of watch over this area called the no touch zone, which is what the doctor calls it. You know, to the, that's what they call it, I should say. And they don't let anybody come to that zone. There's like some something in that little room that, you know, that they don't want to, uh, the captain doesn't want touched by the uh, other crew members. And the other crew members, you know, they have fun with the dog and the cats. And they just kind of like, uh, hey, well, you know, you guys aren't that vicious, but we're going to let you, you know, be the, the guardians of the, of the sealed off area. So one day as they're landing, oh, oh, oh scratch that. This planet that they're looking for, I just read this yesterday, this planet that they're actually looking for, they can't find it. It's not showing up on radar or anything. And all of a sudden, the planet pops up out of nowhere. And they practically get sucked in. They do get sucked in, in fact, to the, by the gravity of that planet. And they're forced to do a, a crash down, so to speak. Shout out crash down. So what happens down there, now they have to put all the stuff that they learn into effect against real clangers. And uh, what happens there is what the, what the story pretty much deals with. This is a cute story, man. It's cute. And I know it's not going to be cute the whole way because I know that, you know, one or many of these animals are not going to make it. And, you know, animals are like kids, you know, especially you know, to those of us who love animals. You know, it's hard to see bad things happen to them. But, you know, that's what good story writing is about. And uh, Porn Sock, Porn Sack, um, and Shota. Easy. Easy for you to say. <laughs> careful, careful how you say that. <laughs> Porn Sack uh, Pachote, who wrote uh, Good Asian, among other things, uh, is the artist, uh, the writer on this. And the uh, art is done by Jesse Lonergan. Uh, he wrote and he, excuse me, he illustrated and colored this book. And um, Porn Sack talks in the back about uh, how he and, um, and Lonergan met. And it just it seemed like there's like a good synergy between them. Um, he said he adopted his adapted his writing style to, to kind of match uh, his drawing style, and he, he said just look out for good things for this book, basically, because this is something I think that uh, people will like, uh, even if you don't like animals. It's, it's a pretty well. It's written from the animal's point of view, but it also shows like. You know, humans are, are not that great, and animals still love us anyway. They love us unconditionally, which is something we would, if you're lucky, you get that from another human being. Uh, but you get them for sure. You get that for sure from animals. And uh, I think this is what this story is going to illustrate: is that you know, these guys are there for us no matter what, even on a desolate planet where you know clangers are coming for us. So yeah, I, I liked it. I liked it a lot. Have you had a chance to read that one yet? No, not the man's best. Okay, yeah. It's, it's, it seems very different than the, the feral and stray dogs thing. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, a good book. Yeah. All right. I, porn, I get, you know, Porn Sack, after reading Good Asian, he's just the kind of Arthur I, I feel like I need three issues at least to, to really get a grasp of what, what he's doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, Good Asian was was uh, was kind of like that, um, but it was worth it in the end because it was a, a big payoff. Next is a book that was the final book last week. It was almost the penultimate book. Uh, that one is called uh, Misfortune's Eyes. Uh, this one is written by a person named Brooklyn Prince. I'm not familiar with their work. Uh, this may be their first comic book written. I think they're also an actor. Uh, you may know them from TV or, or movies because I don't see a lot of stuff, especially younger, newer artists and stuff like that. So uh, this is their first venture into writing a comic book. All right, so this Fortune's Eyes deals with this young lady who's kind of an outcast. Uh, she, she's kind of, kind of sad and pathetic the way that she's running up behind all the mean girls trying to be their friend and everything. They want no part of her. They don't even know her name, you know. 
don't ever want to be a friend to somebody who doesn't, you know, care about you. And just it's better to be by yourself. So she comes home and her dad, her dad, her grandma or her mom is making a has made a birthday cake for her. It is her birthday, but she has nobody to share it with, and she's sad about that. But then, like at the stroke of eleven, she has this 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 thing come over her where she's able to see auras. And she sees auras around her, her mother. I think you want to call her grandmother. She comes in later. She sees auras around other people, but it passes. So it's like it's one part of her powers or her psychic abilities, I should say, uh, that are manifesting. And a knock at the door. Guess who's there? Grandma. Grandma, who all of a sudden, I guess she didn't even know she had a grandma. So I guess that had never come up before between, you know, an adolescent girl and her mom. Okay, I don't want to dwell too much on that, but all right. All of a sudden, grandma comes and says, hey, you know what? I knew that you were manifesting your, your skills at, on your birthday, and I'm here to offer you a chance to come to this secret place where all the psychic people like you feel at home. It's called Hemlock Hallows. And it's hidden behind this, it's like a, a hologram where like, lemmings can't see it, you know? So they, they're, they're in the forest, but there's this whole little town in the middle of the forest where psychic people live. Uh, so grandma takes her there. Uh, she's She tries to make friends there, but then people find out her last name and they don't like her. It's like, damn, wherever I go, people don't like me. What the fuck? Even the, the psychic people don't like me. But she does meet some other people. There's one girl who is a medium. There's one guy here who has telekinesis. He can move things. So they form their own little group and they're sitting in class here. And they meet a teacher who is also sympathetic to their cause. This is a good book too. It seems to be maybe all ages. Because there's only like a couple of like instances of like the word shit in there. So you can hear that at a schoolyard anywhere. It's not a big deal. So I, I still say it was an all ages book. I think it's trying to kind of walk that line of all ages and, and not be too um, and too promiscuous, if you, if you will. That's the right word. But the way I think it's a good book as far as people being introduced maybe to to psychic abilities because th this presentation is kind of like making it seem like it's Hogwarts or it's it's kind of like. Um, this secret little area where the psychics go and we're all, you know, <laughs> we're all treated the same and, and all that. And it's not quite like, it's very like an X book in that way. Like this is your X power. You're a uh, clairvoyant. Uh, you can see the future. I mean, they haven't even talked about the fact that she's going to be able to see people's destinies yet. Right now she just sees auras. I mean, in the solicitation, they mentioned that she can see people's destinies. So that hasn't manifested itself yet. That's the point being that psychic power is not like an X power. It's not like something that you can see, or it's not, it's not like something that's concrete. It's it's it's, it's an undefinable thing. You, you know it, if you have it, you know it. But it's not like math and science. Two plus two doesn't always equal four. You know, so if, you, know, you can take it from what it is, but you can believe in it, believe in it or not. That's the way it is. And one person might not have just one power, so to speak, one power or one skill. He may be multifaceted, you know? So the fact that this breaks it down, but this person has this and this person has that, it's okay, but it, it worked for the reader. So long story short, too late. <laughs> I think this is, a, this is a fun book and I want to see what else it does with her powers and how uh, maybe there's something dark about maybe her grandmother too because the reason that they dislike her and they don't like her name because her mother who did not make the trip you know to the to the magical land of the psychics uh apparently did something to um to the town that messed them up just to save her father and now her and her father the mother that is are separated so it was all for nothing so there's a lot more of the story to be told um I want to see how they do the whole psychic powers thing because uh, right now it's kind of like Hogwarts meets X Men, which is cool. I mean, that's that's what the the masses can relate to. Then you know, go for it that way. So I give it a thumbs up overall for that. Nice. I like the uh, I like how it looks. Yeah, no, you you were thinking about it because of that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Last book get it stuck from this thing here is Dawn Runner. Number one. This is uh, from Ron B, the writer, 
And uh, Evan Cagle is the artist. Uh, Dave Stewart, one of the artists working colorists in, in comic books, is the uh, the color guy. So Dawn Runner is the name of this mech. A lot of mechs in the books I've been reviewing lately. Uh, and in the future, 100 years ago, from the publishing of from this the start of this story, there was a um, portal that was opened over, over somewhere over South America. And these creatures came through there and the world has been putting all its resources into fighting these creatures ever since. And the world's devolved. The, everything else is gone. Countries don't even count anymore. Five corporations have taken over and they run the world and they invest everything into, you know, these fights between the mechs uh, and uh, and these creatures that came out of the hole. Cordonware is the name of the, of the corporation. And you know there's something shady if a corporation is involved. That's all I got to say about that. So, <laughs> that's all I got to say about that. So, and and this one guy that works for the corporation is trying to like talk to the head guy like, hey, I, dude, maybe we should like study these, uh, I think the the Merkai or what are, the, the Tetza. The Tetza is the name of the creatures. Uh, you should study these creatures because we really don't know much about them because whenever they come through, we just kill them for sport. And you know, we televise them, we, we make them out as enemies. Maybe there's something good about them. And he's like, I'm not, I'm not trying to hear that, blah blah blah. Get out of here, you know, corporations rule, corporations of people get the hell out of here. So, there's this, um, this, this woman who's like the biggest mech warrior. This is her right here, and she's like a combination of Beyonce and Michael Jordan. She's like the biggest thing on earth. And, and she she's kind of homesick for her old mech, which is you know it's kind of like uh you know, we we've been, we've been through a lot together, you know. Now you're telling me I gotta I gotta operate Dawn Runner. I mean, you're no Dawn Runner, you know. But this thing doesn't work right. Mm -hmm. So of course, at some point during Dawn Runner's first uh, fight with this big ugly things here, some shit goes wrong. And those things that go wrong, I won't go into, but they look pretty interesting. And with Ron B involved in this. It's probably going to be a pretty interesting story. Uh, so there's a couple of good covers on this too. Like um, the one I used for the the film here is I think a, a FOC Virgin cover of the of the A cover. Uh, there's some um, really great art in here that uh, you can you can see uh, the 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 mech lady. Uh, she's she's getting ready to get into her suit and stuff, but the, the, the art is so detailed, man. Look at the the intensity of all this, you know, this stuff that these they built this wall uh, around them around the uh, the creatures, the uh, the Tetsa, and the giant mechs, and they film all the giant mech fights. So it's like this big money making operation. It's a too big to fail thing. You know, and once you have something that's too big to fail, it just has a life of its own. And you know what I'm saying? Corporations of people, my friend. You know, <laughs> it, just, it, just, it just goes. That much of the corporations are bad. Yes, yes. Corporations are bad. <laughs> so there's something about the corporations who are lying to the people about the, the Tetra that are in there. And they sent this woman on this mission where it's weird shit is happening. And I want to see what happens with her because what happened at the end is pretty trippy. And uh, you need to read this because uh, it's Ron B and it's pretty awesome. So there's that. Uh, Dawn Runner, number one from Black, from Black, from Dark Horse, <laughs> from Black Horse Comics, from Dark Horse Comics. Dawn Runner, folks. Mr. Bomb. That's, uh, I don't know about that one. It sounds kind of cool, though. Yeah, man. I recommend it. Can't what do Ron I mean? V. Ron V is pretty good. Yeah. He's got like several things going right now. I think uh, the last thing he's got going, uh, oh, the latest thing I should say, is um, the uh, the the demon who uh, uh, he's come back to be a connoisseur of of food. Um, which uh, uh, what the hell is that called again? It's, uh, it's uh, something tastes or something like that. I don't know. Oh, rare flavors or something. Thank you, rare flavors. Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> the, the the mind fog is amazing. I had no idea what you were talking about. <laughs> but you, was, but yet but yet you figured it out somehow, man. I yeah. mean I just I, like, was, uh, 
I was wondering if Ron V's ever going to finish Radio Apocalypse. What happened to that book, right? Oh, my yeah. God. That is poor Sack Jesse. We got two I issues. I that. <laughs> poor and Sack. Yeah. That is... Yes. yes it's... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I had to give her. I was like, he's not He's not being funny here. That's really the name here. Yeah, I know. I know. I, uh, oh, I want to see what I love. Okay. Yep. Yeah. That's true. That's true, Sledhead. When Chris I'm, said I was, I would rock that name. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, Harry Potter ish. Yeah, that's a that's a new phrase I just coined just now. So, uh, yes. All right. Um, what up, Cap? Hard luck. Hey, Captain hard luck. Captain What's up? hard luck. Walmart <laughs> making the Gundams. I almost bought a sta- I almost bought a Scarlet Witch statue. I was so close to split. I was like, I don't have enough money. I shouldn't be buying stuff like that. But I almost bought this Scarlet Witch statue. It was looking so cool. But I was like, what do I need this? Why do I want this so badly? What do I need this for? Oh, you almost went I to success- the statue realm. I successfully dodged it, but I don't know. That thing is there every week, man, and I look at it every week. Oh, your name. Yeah. Eventually, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna. You're gonna go I succumb. Love I love me some Scarlet Witch. <laughs> All right. If they so, ever get a, if they ever get a Nightwing one in there, it's a done deal. Yeah, because what can you say? You love Dick. I love, I love Dick. <laughs> That's, That's right. right. <laughs> All right. So Batman, are you caught up on Batman? Did you read one forty five? No, oh, God, I, that should that should have been on my list this week. I was reading all these other books. I should have been reading that one. I have not started the Joker story yet, so I'm a. I'm oh a wow! 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 Yeah. Okay, okay. I won't spoil it. I haven't. No, read. no, no, no. I read the first book in the Joker story. I oh, I see. Okay, okay. What did you think of that first issue? It was interesting. Yeah, I was. Gl- you know, I think I said to you when I read it, it was like, I'm just glad to be done with the Zur and Raw stuff or whatever. <laughs> Tell but me apparently about we're, it. But apparently we're not oh, done with it. But we're not done because after that brief like uh, break from the Zero and Raw stuff, we're coming right back with number one forty-five. I think a oh, one forty-four is it? I forget which one forty-five. I, yeah. I saw they redesigned Felsafe. Uh, they gave him a new look. Yes, I they did. I, I haven't I read that, that issue good. yet, and it uh, looks like some some um, crazy shit happens in uh, one forty-six. It's like <laughs> to Riddler, the Joker, and and uh, and Punchline have both been been slain, but you know that's probably just a deceptive DC cover as they tend to do. Love that art. Is that is that him? In, it looks like Jorge. that. Is, I bet that is him. Minute. Yes, uh, he's back on the interior art. I bet he's doing nice. that cover. Yes, he's back doing the uh, the, the A covers too. So yeah, that's uh he's back. The A team is it. back. Yeah. Evan Dan Mora, man, they're top of the game for me right they now. They are. It's a Del Auto cardstock cover. Dark and mysterious. This Batman would tend to be. Yeah. Oh, but, uh, it Tomu Mori. He needs to get working on Noctera, man. Where's Noctera? I want Noctera back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Noctera has been um kind of uh, in, uh, I guess, on a break. It didn't end, right? It wasn't the last issue. No, not that I know of. No, oh, okay. All right. So, uh, is anyone reading the Immortal Thor? Anyone out there? Shout out. <laughs> you might read the Immortal Thor. Yeah, I'm not on the Immortal books. Although, I guess Immortal Hulk was great. So, I might go back and read that one eventually. Yeah. I mean, the, the Immortal Hulk was. Especially the, the first few issues was like off the chain, uh, and it wrapped up pretty good too. I have to say, um, but I didn't go to the the far as the, the, the Thor thing. I, I may have bought the first issue because this is first issue. I'm a first issue and a cover whore, so I probably bought the first issue. Uh, but other than that, no. Uh, Void Rivals number eight. I am current on that as well. Uh, you didn't even jump on the, the Void Rivals thing, did you? Yeah, I didn't do any of the Energon books. I decided it was too much. Too much. I didn't want to collect, I didn't want to collect one piece of it and not but I didn't want to collect all of it either. So I decided to just not do it. Oh, so not even Duke. You haven't read that one, huh? 
and then I got the first Transformers, and then I decided it was too much, and then so I uh, quit. Okay. Yeah, Boyd Rivers doesn't do a lot of covers, which is good because you don't need a whole bunch of them. Maybe, I think there should be never more than two to three covers for every issue. It's my personal opinion. It just cheapens the, the value of the variants. But uh, it's been a, it's a good series. I realize now that what I, I was like, who is buying these variants? And it's like, it's all of us are, are buying. Them, yes, right? because I'm guilty. Is, when you buy, I mean, sometimes you buy just one of the variants, but I'm the type of person that if I'm buying the, I'm always going to buy the A and then I might buy a variant too. So comic book, when you're, when you're making a comics, like I could sell you one or I could potentially sell you four copies of the same book because I slapped a different cover on it. It's just, why would they not give you more variants when they know it, they're going to sell more books when they do? Yeah, but it's, they're, they're going after a certain target market. Collector. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then there's this other hardcore collector that hates variants, that only buys the A cover. And that's what that's how God intended it, damn it. You buy the very, A cover and that's it. Very few of those people are pure. You like there's many, you know what I'm what I mean by this. Like there's a lot of people complaining about it, but yeah. the most the vast majority of the people complaining about it are participating in it. And uh I am one of them because I complain about it and also participate in it. Oh, I, ain't no sense in me even lying up and complaining about it. I buy them. <laughs> I buy them. I buy the hell out of them and that's you know, why did, yeah. Why do they exploit us with these gimmicks? Oh, give me that gimmick. Yeah, I know, <laughs> right? <laughs> that's right. Sign that's me meme. up for that gimmick. <laughs> that's a meme right there. Yes. <laughs> look at this gunslinger spawn cover. I mean, damn it. One thing about spawn and anything by uh Todd McFarlane is there's usually some damn good artwork involved with it. This is uh it's pretty cool. I mean, yeah, I do like that. Yeah, only two covers. Only covers a uh, Javi Fernandez cover, but they're both dope. You know, Gunslinger Spawn. And are they two ninety nine? Two ninety nine. Damn, I'm insanely behind on this book. Like insane. Like probably. Like I know. 20, probably like twenty six issues behind. Like I buy this book, but I never read it. I need to fix that. I know, man. But it's so cheap, and it's a good book. You know, I'll get around to it eventually. Man, That's how I feel. Book. It's like eventually I'm going to read this, and I'm going to be happy that I. Uh huh. So. Uh huh. Yeah. That's what I'm doing with Detective Comics now. Detective Comics and Miles. You know, like I know I, know I like Miles. I know I like Batman. And I'm going to eventually going to read these one of these days. Right now, I'm trying to focus on the indies and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah. Well. You didn't not get Sam and Butch today, right? I didn't see. No, that's right. You didn't get. I did not pick it up, but it's coming from uh, my comic shop. Uh, I saw it in the shop. I almost got it, but uh, I caught up on Duke instead. <laughs> oh, the my, the my comic shop video. I will probably get it out tomorrow, man. It's ginormous. I got a bunch of stuff um, of all shapes and sizes from my comic shop. Uh, let's see, a sensational She Hulk number seven, which I'm also. I've somehow become behind on that. You know, that's a, a pretty easy read and a fun book. It is book. an easy read. I'm also mm -hmm. I need to get back yeah. on that one. But I know I can probably, like, bang out three of them in a row. You know, like, okay, let's read this one and that one. And okay, now I'm all caught up, you know. It's basically her. Yeah. yeah. We're about to say the same thing. I'm into yes. the soap opera of that book. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Her and her boyfriend. That's yeah, I'm down for about. it, dude. It, I, got, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me, but I am like I'm interested in their <laughs> relationship. Oh man! All right, so how about this um, Deadpool number one, uh, volume twenty? Probably I don't know. Uh, Cody Ziegler is writing it. Uh, Rohe Antonio is the artist. I want to say. Hopefully, I didn't mess their name up. Um, I knew I ordered. The A cover, just because, once again, first first issue, damn you, Marvel. And what else? I did not. Oh yeah, this one, um, the Javi, Javier uh, Garon, which is any. This is another one they get me right away with any kind of homage, yeah. you know, <laughs> cover. They especially, get me with this all the time, especially from that era. They got oh, you. Oh, oh, yeah. 
you know why? Because especially the more so the bronze, even than the silver, because I missed a lot of the bronze age because I was like going through so much shit in the bronze age. I, I read stuff in the silver age and like life hit me in the bronze age. I missed a lot of books in the bronze age. So I'm I'm just discovering a lot of books that I, I missed from the bronze age. Like, whoa, whoa, this was what this has been around for this long. And I, and I not, I've not seen it. My bronze collection is is sorely lacking. I'm trying to like really pad that up. Uh, before it becomes like silver and it gets out of reach, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so I could still find you know decent prices in bronze books, you know. But yeah, this is this is one I, I definitely pre ordered for sure. I wonder, man, is there a younger generation that's going to cherish these things, or you know, are they going to stop having value when the people who are 40 plus right now die? Oh, god, that's that's a very sad, very sad. Very sad uh, scenario you're paying this. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. Honestly, I feel right. like the an- I feel like the answer is no. I hope it I'm could wrong, be. But... It could be too, but you know who who knows? Twenty years from now, who knows what the hell will be happening? We, we could have giant mechs fighting monsters coming through a portal or some shit. For all we know, we don't know what could be happening. Like, comic books be the, the least of our problems <laughs> at that point, you know. Uh, Stan Pinozzi is kind of cool. When the aliens show up, hopefully they're fans of comics. Oh God, I hope they're friendly. Are they friendly spirits? Friendly. It doesn't seem, you know, it doesn't <laughs> seem likely though, does it? It's like if you if you look at Mother Nature and how things work, um, they're not going to be friendly. <laughs> oh well, well they're not just one race, you know. Just they're, they're many many races. Oh um, really? So they're they are, they're the federation out there, huh? The federation exists. I'm just saying. I don't believe hey. it. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. There's the Klingons exist, dude. We're screwed. <laughs> Probably some warlike, uh, you know, it's, it, you know, race like the Klingon. I would say, yeah. But there's, there's probably some good Klingons, though. You know. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> oh, Geiger number one. What? Worf was only good because he was a half breed. <laughs> he was one of the good ones. One of the good ones. Don't you love that term? <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. So the first of the Ghost Geiger verse. I'm excited. It's finally here. I'm pumped for this. Totally, I'm man. Seriously, I'm seriously pumped for this. So this, I guess, is the ongoing, right? This is the. Yes. There's already been a short series of, of Geiger, right? We were introduced to him, okay? So this now is the we ongoing. Hear. Now we we're here. We heard, we heard. <laughs> exactly. Uh, the new ongoing man. I'm gonna buy it and I'm gonna support it, and I hope it runs for a long, long time. Geiger. They're build. They're building a very the Ghost Machine thing, the unnamed war. They're building a very large universe here, and we could, you know. And this is the thing, like, will any of these things be worth a lot? I don't know. Will will could any modern book have value decades down the road, like you see Bronze Age books do? I don't know. But man, if there's one that's gonna do it, I feel like it's the ground level of this stuff, man. Like, yeah. I would give it a very small percentage chance of it, but I would say it does have a chance, man. And and I'm excited about it. I'm locked in on all of these titles. I'm um, I passed on the Energon because I felt like it was too much, but I'm I'm all in on everything for this one. I love the 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 team that they've put together for this. I've really enjoyed this this slow buildup of this world that they've been doing. I like how you can go and find first appearances of character like Junkyard Joe's first appearance is in um, mm-hmm. is in Geiger and uh, and the uh, the northerners first appearances in junkyard joe you know like it's all interwoven together um with the thought about the future right there at the beginning so i'm pumped for this one all right i'm gonna stop talking now but i'm excited uh, oh, no, don't, don't stop talking oh <laughs> uh, yeah i think this is this is on a on par to me with the uh the spawn universe this is with better writing perhaps yeah, they, I was gonna i was yeah. like i don't like it but yes with better yeah. writing is the key yeah. thing to be said uh-huh yes. Yes, a level, that level of art, but better writing. Yep, exactly. So that's just the first. I tell you, the first of uh, of the uh, the spawn. I should say spawn. The Geigerverse books that are coming out this week. Let me see. Uh, Sacrifices number seven. Sacrifices is a great story. Oh my god, one of my favorites from last year. 
Uh, Grim is coming back. Are you still on Grim? Or did you drop it? I th I'm still on it, but I haven't been reading it actually. But I've still been collecting it for whatever reason. Okay. Uh, but Chris, uh, yeah, you got to start with Geiger the first volume. I feel like you got to start there before you go to Junkyard Joe. Junkyard Joe is great. And then once you're done reading Junkyard Joe, come over to my channel, watch Comic Book Story Time episode three with Pokan Joe talking about uh, his service uh, in the army as well as his experience reading. Uh, that series, which he really enjoys. So check that out. All right. So a little okay. self-promotion there. <laughs> oh, okay. That's awesome. Yeah. You could be right too, Willie. Yeah. I think those kids are, yeah. It'd be kind of like, you know, we're I'm excited to find out and look at that art. Who is the artist on that cover? Is it Fabic? I love, I love his style, man. Who is I the cover? Think this, is, this, this one is uh, Yvonne Reese. Oh, oh I, Ivan Reese. If you excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. That looks yeah. great. This yeah, one, it, this cover, it it's funny. The A cover for this book, they they still had copies, but this cover, the B cover, was sold out. On no kidding. Just wow. Weird. How often does that happen? I mean, it's not something you often see. Yeah. No. Weird. Wow, that's very cool. All right, all right. So, uh, yeah, sacrificers, uh, Grim coming back, and the next book in the Gargaverse. They got this big. It's like Geiger Week next week. Is uh Rook Exodus number one? It's all sold out now, by the way. No way. Rook, Rook is number all one. Rook what? Is all, you know, Geiger's all sold out. Rook is all sold out. Yeah. The hype is real for this one, man. It is, like, man. You got the first, I think his first appearance was in, was it in the Ghost Machine number one? It may have been. First maybe, Rooks. Rooks. Rooks, yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Yes. So, Rook. Rook, keep an eye on Rook, man. That's a great character. The name, I forget the where, look. I'm excited for Redcoat. I forget where his first appearance was in. Uh, Maybe, yeah, it may not have been the. Um, it was not before the, the book before, before the the Ghost Machine book. Yeah, whatever that was. I'm pretty sure I have it. Oh, it was the 80 page. You're right. It was the 80, 80 page. page. Yeah, with the, the DC right. checker checkerboard on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That was yeah, his yeah. first appearance. But I'm I'm interested to see the interactions between Redcoat and the Northerner. I think it's going to be fun. I'm excited for that book, and uh, I'm excited for the overall story because we're building up to this unnamed war, which is mm -hmm. why Geiger lives in this post-apocalyptic world. As right. Or, and of course, Redcoat and the Northerner, who are immortals, are going to all be involved in that stuff. So we're eventually going to get to that story, and I'm excited about it. Yeah, I mean, you know, they keep showing the timeline. They keep showing the timeline of the unnamed yeah. war and all this stuff, but we don't know what happens in, the, in that timeline. So it's so yeah. much to be filled in. Uh, they could, I guess, there's so much material they could just uh, just show us. That's awesome. Yeah, Rook does look cool in the art, man. The art is banging. Jason Fab, I don't know if it's Fabic, but his art mm -hmm. is banging. Well, banging. here's a here's another B cover by Ivan Reese. I mean, he's a busy man uh, making those B covers for Rook uh, Exodus. Ooh, I should have got me a blank. I didn't get a blank. Hopefully my shop has some. <laughs> oh, here you go. Here's your one for one hundo, my friend. My friend, Rook gonna, Exodus. Not, this is not Jason, it. Jason Fabak right here, baby. How Wouldn't bad do you want that? <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not worth it to you, huh? So, um, yeah. Oh, I can't do that stuff. I don't. I'm not balling like that, you know. Uh, <laughs> I can't be living like that. Oh uh, yes. It'll take time to restore chaos. Would not be prudent, for sure. Um, yeah, but if, if there was like a. This is the one for one hundred, man. There can be a version for that much, you know. But this is it's a cool cover. But this should have been like a C cover or something like that, and then maybe a virgin cover could have been uh, the one for one hundred, but. Hey, what do I know? Retailer exclusives, Gotham Central, Mike Ruth. Ruth? Get in on the ground level. I mean, this is not the ground. This is the, you know, this is, you can't get in on the basement level anymore, but you can get in on the ground level. You can get on the ground. Everything's still affordable. Everything's yeah. still affordable in the Gagaverse, but uh, the Gagaverse, if it ever gets to Jeff Johns, I, I'm sure he's got some connections to get stuff licensed too, right? I mean, He's got stuff done done before. Yeah. 
I mean, they've got to build it, and uh, if 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 it uh, gets the hype, because that what they're trying to do is build an IP that can be all. Everybody is trying to build their own IP, and that's in every mm -hmm. and that's in every market, really. Like if you look at people like Stephen A. Smith, Pat McAfee, uh, Shannon Sharp, all yep. of them, are, they're all building their own. Rich Eisen, their own <laughs> IP, yep. so that they're not beholden to the ESPN or any of these corporations. So that instead of them working for the corporation, the corporation is going to leak because that's what's going on with Pat McAfee is he doesn't really work for ESPN so much as they're leasing his uh -huh. product from, from him. This his product that he still completely owns. Like there, he Pat McAfee more than anybody has changed the landscape. And everybody is looking at what he did and they're trying to do the same thing. That's why you see all of them with their own YouTube channel now. I love YouTube, that. YouTube is the medium. And YouTube is going to be so powerful because more and more and more and more people watch YouTube. Whether you're into comics, whether you're into cooking, whether you're into video editing, whatever you're into, you're on YouTube watching it, man. I have a confession to make. I could probably watch YouTube for the rest of my life and not leave it. Yeah, I, mean, I can just I man, it, it knows it. It knows because it keeps sending me more shit. The fucking algorithm keeps sending me, oh, you saw that? How about this? How about this? How about this? You know, keep sending me more shit. Are you going to say? The only, the only thing that pulls me off of it is sports and gambling. Yeah, Which gambling, I spend a lot of time watching Both good things. Yeah. <laughs> and porn. And only, yeah, sports and video <laughs> games can pull me away. But I do, I spend a lot of time on YouTube, man. A lot. Larry, thanks for stopping by, my friend. Good to see you. Peace and love. Peace and love. <laughs> Peace out, Larry. Peace out. Oh, good news. Lakers covered. Four five. Four five four. Our numbers four five four. Four five four. All right. I need the Jazz to not lose to the Spurs, and that's uh -oh. not gonna happen, folks. <laughs> so here's your second, or let's just say your third uh Gaga book. Uh perhaps maybe the, your favorite? The red coat. Red coat Geiger's number one. Geiger's Geiger's your favorite? One. Okay, yeah. but with Red Coat's got some some possibilities with that whole. If they get the right person to play Red Coat, you know, I, I can almost imagine like you know, like um, Chris Hemsworth really playing Red Coat. You know, <laughs> that could be a great character for him. But I don't know if he's he may be too big and too much money to, to play the character. You know, but if it's yeah, a movie, maybe he's a he's gonna be a lovable rap scallion kind of yeah. Captain Jack Sparrow character. We all yes. love Captain Jack Sparrow. You know, yeah. Captain Jack Sparrow's a backstabber and you can't trust him, but man, is he lovable. You know, know. that's what Red Coat's gonna be. Yes. So, so maybe Chris Hemsworth was a too too lovable, but maybe some kind of a more rascally kind of a you know uh fellow like that. Uh, to uh play a young a young Woody Harrelson. Oh my god, yes. He's probably too old now, but a young Woody. <laughs> he might be able to pull it off, you know, but he's gotta have a British accent though. Does Woody ever done a British accent? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> And of course, the obligatory Ivan or Ivan, if you will, Ivan Reese uh, cover. This man got a lot of a lot of assignments, doing a lot of covers. Now, so, LeBron only had twenty three. Dang it! Only had twenty three. An elderly man only had twenty three points. Come on, man. <laughs> yes, yeah, hell yeah, man. I'm, I'm looking for him where I can find him. Absolutely. Oh, here's a question. Uh, we got Bobito. What up, Bobito? Hey, what's up, Bobby D? And Chris Gibson has a uh, really quick. Uh, what would what would be your favorite way to collect? I am a single floppy issue at a time guy. It's a ten run set. I want them all. You guys like to trade PB, TBBs, TPBs more compendiums? Uh, like uh, you know. Me personally, I like the floppies. I like the floppies for what they are. I do buy trade sometimes if there's a story that you know I'm not that interested in, but I, I read the number one. And I want to see maybe how it came out, so I'll catch up with a trade later on. But for the most part, I'm a floppy collector. For me, if I was smart, I would read and collect trades and, and hardcovers because I love those. And the way that I like to read is is the trade hardcover way. I like to read it all together as to pose mm -hmm. to a little bit once a month. So if I was smart, that's the way that I would collect. Uh, collect. Mm -hmm. 
But a motherfucker like me, I just love the thrill <laughs> of the floppy game, baby. Yeah, I know. I can't get away from it. You know, I just love that that weekly thrill. I, I seriously, if I was smart, I wouldn't collect this way. But I, I just enjoy going to the shop every week. I enjoy having. I seriously enjoy having a short boxes of a bunch of comics. I don't know why it's it's the kid still in me, but uh, I like it and uh, I can't stop. Won't stop. Yeah. Yeah, can't stop, won't stop. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a generational thing. I think uh, guys like us, uh, you know, yeah. grew up with uh, with all that stuff, and we like the feel of the floppy. You know, that makes yeah. any sense. I like the look of it. I like the feel of it. I like I like pulling out a random short box and just going through what's in there. I just I like it. You know, I like all of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Willie gets on. He gets like floppies, but he will get an omnibus. Now I don't have any omnibuses yet. But uh, I'm not a, a, I'm not averse to to buying one. You know, uh, it'd be great to have one. I have a few collected editions. I got some Marvel Masterworks books that I love. Those, uh, <laughs> the thrill of the floppy and the agony of defeat. Yes, <laughs> you fucking like me. <laughs> yeah. He's like a pimp named Slaughter now. <laughs> All right, yeah, Bobby. Bobby knows what I'm talking about. If we were smart, but you know, we can't <laughs> stop. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, Spider Man. Oh yeah, Green Goblin. I wanted to mention Captain Hardluck, who mentioned betting on Grandpa when I said I was hope betting on LeBron, which I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's talk about a freak of nature and a unicorn, man. They're Guys trying to like, say he's on. They're trying to say he's on PEDs. PEDs don't do that. A lot of people on PEDs. A lot of people can't play quality basketball to the late 30s you know this man is just a freak of fucking nature you know? peds would allow you to continue to train and recover um well past uh i you know i think at that age man i feel like yeah i don't know what i'm talking about i, I think it's a possibility <laughs> I'll just say that way. It's a possibility, but what's, that, what's your crap. clips? I don't have any facts. Oh, <laughs> oh you're talking about that? Um, oh, don't was don't there, don't tell me about that. Uh, was it Charles Barkley or was it, okay? It was up. him. This is my guy. Yeah. I yeah. don't have facts to back this up. God rest his soul. I'm blanking on his name. All That's a Herman Cain. Herman Cain. I know he died. He went and got COVID for Trump, that poor bastard. Ain't that something? Uh, the rest died. Of yeah, he died. Right. The rest of the motherfuckers still alive. Ain't that a bitch? What a shitty way to go, man. I know, right? <laughs> yep, yep, yep. I love it too. Man, the Herman Cain. Herman Cain. God rest his name. All right. So, Love Everlasting. Next week comes out. Uh, the One Hand, number oh, is three. It, is it Tom oh, King yeah. hour already? <laughs> it's pretty close. Uh, Suicide Squad. This is a cool cover with the. Uh, but that's, that's all I get from that is cool covers from that. I, I, don't, I don't. There, there there's no guts for that they say to the gang. Uh, Crave number five. I've heard that was very good. I uh, did not get the first issue, so I can't really. Um, can't really uh jump on now, so I, I may trade that one. Same with Ghost Lore, which is still going. Uh, Ranger Academy, I got the first one on that because I thought it might be another like you know Strange Academy kind of a thing going on, but it turns out I don't know if it is or not. Probably not. Is uh, it the Power Lord. Rangers is it not Power. Rangers? It is. It is Power Rangers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like you know. Strange Academy started out the whole like with Teen Titans Academy. You know, everybody's got an academy now, you know, like, you know. So I thought it might have the same success as uh, Strange Academy, but it, as far as I know, it did not. It did not. Uh, Crash Down 3 is already here, huh? I've got to get Crash Down 2. I haven't read number two yet. I got to find that. So uh, I love uh, that, Tyler. They have a great Tyler Kirkham cover, man. I, lo I love Tyler Kirkham, though. He is definitely one of my favorite artists, cover artists for sure. Uh, Last Mermaid number two. Uh, we reviewed that one about the, the poor girl in the dirty aquarium walking around to trying to get uh, some fresh water. Uh, Deep Cuts number six. Looks like uh, we're taking to the 60s now. We're bringing this, this jazz anthology into the 60s. So that should be interesting. 
Uh, uh, what else we got? The sickness. I was that supposed to come out last week, number five. Well, it'll be out one of these days. It's, it's very maybe, good. Someday, maybe. Yeah, yeah. It'll, it'll be out. It'll be out in time. Uh, the four portions have come out already. Y'all can catch up on those right now. So, uh, uh, in the meantime, in between times, crash down number three, as you mentioned. Uh, minor threats. Damn, minor threats. Uh, every time you turn around, you got a new series coming out. Uh, I, have, I'm, I haven't finished the last one that they that came out. <laughs> Slow down, boys. That's uh, the Pat and Oswald thing. Uh, Jordan Bloom is also doing that thing there. But the first series was good. And the second one, uh, I have not finished yet. Uh, uh, let's see. Moving right along here. Hack slash kill your idols. It's an image thing. I'm not into the hack slash thing, but uh, a lot of those don't come out on time. As far as uh, I can tell. Uh, oh, God. Let it gas. Okay. Let it gas. Lean number three is coming out. Did I miss something? Did, did I miss something? Okay. I didn't even get number one yet. Okay. And they haven't canceled it from my, my comic shop. So what the hell is going on? Uh, Torpedo 1972. Number two. I reviewed that. Uh, number one uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, that was Okay, pretty good. And uh, let's see. Oh, do we need to uh, check on what's next here. I think that's it. Well, maybe one more from down here. Yeah, that leaded gasoline's got to be wrong. Number one is still to be determined. So I know, right? Uh, it's just like it's a glitch in the matrix right there. Uh, it's more more critical entertainment stuff. There's a uh, uh, life. It's an open door. Critical Entertainment will be on next week um, in the Artist Alley segment. So uh, I remember so you should. reviewed that book. Yeah, I, I did. That. Yeah, and we'll be, ta be talking about that and a few other things that they that they've done over there at Critical Entertainment. So, and they'll be here to talk about their stuff and answer any questions you may have about their books. So, look at what time it's getting to be, boys. I know we we're really late today. We had a great Artist Alley segment, but it's penultimate book time, and here we go. It is time for the penultimate book, and this week, that book is a Kogan, Brutalizer of Gods. <laughs> yes, I said it, I meant it. A Kogan, Brutalizer of Gods. And they've made this lovely trailer that I don't have to make one, so here it is right here. First there was water. Then a great god fell. The god drowned. Our water world welcomed the divine. It was the gift of meaningless death. But even our murderous world found gods not so easy to slay. For after he pulled the lamb from the sea to save himself from drowning, Obatala had more to drink. Our creator was a drunk god, and his first creations were monsters. That puny one. <laughs> True war can only exist between equals. What I have for you today are the horrors of complete annihilation.
Who... Who are you? Arkham. Brutalizer of Guards. In stores, April 2024. How about that? Brutalizer of gods. That's something. That is. Yeah. The god killer. In an age thought forgotten, when man, monster, and the divine all strove the earth, a lone warrior emerges to test the immortality and the cruel gods who would deal destruction with impunity. He's a one man reckoning that stands in defiance of his divine masters with a sword in hand and a thirst for god blood his name a kogan the brutalizer of god yes in the tradition of robert e howard's conan the barbarian stan lee and jack kirby's thor and the best-selling god of war franchise superstars in the making murueva eodle and dotun akande Hope I got those right. Uh, the creative duel behind I Am Iron Man and Moon Knight, Black, White, and Blood usher in a new epoch of African dark fantasion? Fantasion? <laughs> okay. The ancient continent of El... I El think that's supposed to be El two words. Of African yeah. dark fantasy on the ancient... <laughs> I know. That's a new word. I'm back my learning. I got to bring up the... Bring out the thesaurus the on that one. Uh, fantasy, fantasy on the continent, on the ancient continent. Okay, of Al Kibuan, so like Al Al Albion, sounds like something you could get in your blood. Uh, with with a our, mythic, another with a with a mythic cycle of cosmic destiny and unrelenting warfare, colliding man against God and blade against blade. Told across three powerful, oversized, bi-monthly chapters. Steady your mind and spirit for a glorious new comics milestone revealing the fabled origin and battle-tested fury of a Kogan, brutalizer of gods. <laughs> Great, your timing. Great timing. <laughs> oh, man. So I, I pre-ordered this. I know, I'm not sure which order, which uh, book I pre-ordered. I know I pre-ordered one of these uh, covers. The A cover is pretty cool. Uh, this uh, Gray Williamson C cover. I mean, this may have been one that I uh, I also ordered. But I definitely remember pre-ordering this on my comic shop. Uh, so, and it looks like it's a only a five ninety nine book. So it's no, it's not super super pricey. Uh, Ramon Villalobos does a cover. Maybe this is the one I did. I'm not sure. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. And looks like David Mack in the style of David Mack. Uh, you know, I want to correct something. I said this a while back. And I never got a chance to correct it. Uh, we were talking about David Mack and his style and everything. I said David Mack uh, did this book called She years ago. That was totally wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that book was done by uh, Billy Tucci, and I apologize to uh, Billy Tucci and to uh, David Mack for for getting this shit twisted. But where uh, was the correction department on that one? I know, right? Staff, you're all fired. Get out of here. <laughs> Take off. But this is a uh, this is one of a uh, yeah. I mean, you still got that David Mack style, that watercolor splash kind of a thing too. It's kind of like his uh, his mo now. But it looks a little different, and I kind of like this one too. So maybe this is the one I pre-ordered. No, one of the ones I pre-ordered. So yeah, this is a this could be a thing. It's got a little we bit. We got of, critical. Uh, we got critical entertainment sneaking in. What's up, CE? We'll see you next week. <laughs> we will. We will see you. You're fired, Janet. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Yeah, where are you at on that one, Jen? All right. <laughs> uh, believe me, she's got her hands full of so many things. I, if we were to fire her, I'd be I'd be sunk. Uh, <laughs> yeah, buddy. 
see you next week. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, this is a there was there was another contender also, but this was one that uh I felt th this was the the standout. Uh uh a Kogan, brutalizer of gods, typos and all. Probably no typos in the book just on here, I, I, I would think. <laughs> so, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Hopefully that's many typos. You tell there was a cold read. I did not know what's coming up. Like, oh, what is this word here? <laughs> What are you talking about? <laughs> All right, the final book. Final book. If I can find it here. Uh, we talked about Torpedo, and there's another one, The Last First Americans, uh, is uh, Principles of Necromancy. Uh, this was also a, a contender uh, for the uh, penultimate book. This is a Jackson Lansing and Colin Kelly joint. And I don't often do this, but I have a... Uh, I, I was I was so close to making this the um, the penultimate book, but I also have a trailer for uh, Principles of Necromancy. We can't see what book you're showing. Oh, I didn't show it. Okay. Uh, well, I didn't share that page yet. Uh, share this instead. Okay. Yeah, this is the book here, Principles of Necromancy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. from uh, Jackson Lansing. Uh, two writers, two is better than one, uh, and Colin Kelly, and Iman Winkle is the artist. Uh, this was so good i thought it deserved to um have a little bit of his own uh trailer here it is There, oh, you go. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. And yes, the deviant, the deviant, them all, was them brought, the deviant was brought up in the chat, and I just want to say, Chris, I'm the deviant is the comic book I'm most excited about. I am amazed at the start to this. Um, I'm a huge Tynan fan, uh, but this is the best that I've seen him do in terms of setting up a new story. Uh, better than Nice House of the Lake for sure, and I really like Nice House of the Lake. But Me too. I am feeling the deviant. I am excited for every issue. I read it immediately on New Comic Book Day. Uh, I'm all in on the deviant. Okay, I'm done. I hear you. I mean, it's uh, he's tackling a subject that uh, a lot of people might find uh, too sensitive, and it's so it interesting. Well. And I don't know where he's gonna go with it. Like I, I'm, I'm fascinated with it. I can't wait to find out. Ready for the next issue? <laughs> yes. So this deal here, there is no such thing as magic. The city king has driven the barbarian hordes to the edge of the world, ushering in an age of reason and medicine. But in the dark woods beyond his reach, where the last pagans still keep their ancient ways, a single man of civilization is about to show the true meaning of medical miracle. His goal, to overcome death itself, and God help the man or king who stands in his way. Behold the glorious and gut-wrenching work of a doctor, Jacob Eyes, the world's first necromancer. Why well, do you like that shit? The first one. The first, the very first. First, there's a Derek Robertson, one for 15. Derek Robertson, I want to say the boys, known for the boys. Now, this is this is hey, pretty brutal. I need you to do me a favor. Did you see down below somebody said, anybody interested in this? I need you to just let them know that. You that yes, you're interested. Oh, I will. Films, <laughs> film, films needs to know. Films needs to know. films. Fear not. I'm interested in this. <laughs> it was almost a penultimate book, so I must be very interested in it. Yeah, it's um. I'm looking for this uh, Derek Robertson uh one for ten. I bet I can get it for a decent price too. Uh, this this might be a low ordered book, so who knows? But looks good. Looks good. All right, so um, I'll uh, add one there. more. Yes, uh, there's. I'll add one. Can I scream? Coming up from Ke Keen Spot. Um, it's uh, written by Jonathan Hedrick, which has been a guest on uh, Scotty Vaughn's channel. I like that guy. I like his writing. And uh, he is doing that one. Uh, he's doing that one with his wife, um, Francesca Fentini. Ooh, okay. 
And uh, I pre-ordered that one because I don't think I'll see it in my shop, but I'm definitely going to give it a go. I like Jonathan Hedrick. Oh, okay. That's a Keen Spot book too, huh? Let me check out a Keen Spot. But those are like digital and uh, and hard copies. I want to say too. Okay. Yeah, I bought. I ordered it from Tifo, so they got it. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, I think King Spot is a a website that also has read on you know digital read comics. Yeah, also, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Can I kick it? And can I scream? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So uh, that's all. Yes, I mean, you we, can. <laughs> yes, you can, buddy. All right. So we ran a little long, but damn it, it was worth it. We had a great show, a great guest. Great Two stuff. and a half hour show. That's Ooh. a new record, isn't it? Oh, a new sure. world record. Personal best. <laughs> he put half the, half the fans to sleep. The rest of them are the hardcore folks are still with us. Uh, so many so many of the homies stuck with us the whole time, which, man, we can't be thankful enough. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really enjoy hanging out with you guys. I look forward to hanging out with you guys. I love uh, to see what you guys have to say in the chat, how you're reacting. And uh, what you're talking about, what you're curious about. So thank you so much to everybody in the chat. Thank you to our guest, uh, who was who was great. And, Thomas uh, Nichols, some, some really interesting check books. Check that brother out. He's got a lot Definitely going check on. Check out tncomedy.net, TN Comedy on Instagram. Definitely check him out. And then of course, Critical Entertainment is going to be here next week. Looking forward to that. So yes, thank sir. you to everybody, man. Always a good time, man. Of course, always thank a you good everybody. time. Thank you for letting me tag along. Coming oh, that. man. Thank you for coming, son. I love you. And uh, all you guys out there watching, all you folks out there watching, God bless. Be safe. Read your comics and have a great time. Love, peace, and love. And we will see you next week. Deuces.